baby, my back. Going on here? Hold on. What's going on here? Come on, don't do this to me. What's up, you day? What's up, JJ? What you doing, Cliff? <laughs> I'm going to check out this uh, podcast episode I, I didn't get a chance to see uh, yet. Everyone's been talking about, and uh, I know some people were mentioned, even some people that I know. So I'm just interested to see what uh, Cat Williams has to say. But why can't I pull up my stuff? What's going on here? It's like, YouTube Studios is back at it again. Back in the saddle again. Everything's frozen. Okay. What is going on here? Oh, my stuff's all wonky. Willy wonky. All right. So, look, I wasn't sure if you guys wanted me to do this as a regular video or a live. I figured we'd do this live so we could just hang out together. You know, if you guys have any words of wisdom or you want to discuss this. I have a little bit of a... Uh, how do I put this? Industry perspective, uh, being in the music industry. And uh, I know Cap. I met Cat before, cool guy, um, funny guy, hilarious, like off the cuff, just fucking hilarious. But I want to check this out. What's up, Victoria? What's up, Jessica White, the Dancing Outlaw? How you doing? What's up, Lee Cat Libra? What's up, Victoria Korea? I already said that. Duh. What's up, Anthony Robertson? What's up, Danny? What's up, Kings Packers? What's good? How you doing? I'm trying to get a hold of somebody because I can't. Turn something on. I don't know what's going on. All right. What's up, Rhonda? What's up, Grandy? What's up, Maria? What's up, Toby? What's up, David Drinkwater? How you guys doing? What's up, Jesse? What's up, Danny? Cat Williams is funny. Pimp Chronicles, yeah. Pimp, Pimp Chronicles was was something special. I'll tell you that right now. But I'm a little uh, confused with how my lives working at the moment. Peep the Shay Shay channel, and I plan on watching it today with the seventy year old Ric Flair. Woo! Calling me Ric Flair, the seventy year old Ric Flair. Are you calling me a seventy year old Ric Flair? Oh, he's going to have one with Ric Flair. I was like, where do, how do I resemble Ric Flair in any way whatsoever? Like, that makes no sense. <laughs> I was like, what? That makes no sense. Why 
what the f is going on? All right. I, I guess I'm just going to wing it. I'm a little frustrated that I can't watch this. Um, do you guys prefer me to put the video larger and then me in a little corner? Or prefer just to have it like my regular reaction videos? What do you guys prefer? Because I want to watch this. It's like a two and a half hour video. I'm going to try to get through as much as I possibly can. I can't guarantee anything. Ric Flair is so ass for leaving his Kill Tony appearance mid-set. I don't know what that means. Yes, the video larger. All right, I can do that. Let me see here. So all I got to do is this. Let me just make sure I got this set up right. But why, oh why, is this set up this way? That's not at all what I wanted to do. There we go. That should be right. So it would be me in the corner like this. Is that better? Is that what you guys prefer? Can't see anything because this is in the way. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Put the chat box over here as well. Because you and Ric Flair are always off the cuff. Probably, maybe. Ric Flair is a G2. All right. So we're just going to jump straight into this. Is this fine with me at the bottom like this? Green screen, me sitting on the couch with them. Yes, that would be epic. Yo, I, I can't, I can't, I can't fix the ads. So something's going on with my shit here. Hold on. And it's really frustrating me right now. Everything is frozen again. All right, we're just going to jump into this. Fuck it. I don't care. I, I don't care. It is what it is. We're just going to watch this and hang out because I haven't had a chance to see this yet, and I really want to see it. So let's go. How do you turn this on? There we go. All right, let's see what Cat has to say. Cat Williams Unleashed. All right. 2024. <laughs> all my life. Been grinding all my life. Oh, they're sipping too. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. <laughs> One slice, got to roll the dice. That's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. Yeah. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. One slice, got to roll the dice. That's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. Still good, Maria. I'm good. Hello, welcome to another episode of Club Shay Shay. I am your host, Shannon Sharp. I'm also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay, the guy that's stopping by for conversation and a drink today. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to love him. Oh, real quick, too. I didn't say this. Guys, go like, go subscribe to Club Shay Shay. It's C-L-U-B uh, space S-H-A-Y S-H-A-Y. I never met uh, Shannon Sharp. Some call him the greatest, the greatest, one of the greatest comedians, dead or alive. One of America's greatest entertainers, one of the funniest men on the planet, world-renowned, multi-talented, a comedy legend. He's touring. To, he's the top touring comedian selling out arenas. He he's a hilarious storyteller, Emmy award-winning actor, voice actor, rapper, writer, producer, director, icon, genius, a national tre treasure, philanthropist, humanitarian, social activist, a father, one of the great funny men of our generation and any generation, Mr. Cat Williams. Thank you, sir. I, that was, was that magnificent. Intro? I you are, you are, you are magnificent at intros and- I was about to say, can I get somebody to do my intro like that? You did not skimp on mine. I appreciate it. Appreciate that. Fair you know, anytime you come to Club Shay Shay, we have to toast. Yes. Bro, you've been doing it. I mean, you told, you're one of the top tour, you're the t one of the top touring comedians of all time. You already mm -hmm. got started before we started taping. Mm. And people forget that Cat Williams has been selling out arenas for over a decade. Maybe almost two decades. He he has been snubbed by the industry, but it doesn't matter. He has such a following, and he is so damn funny that people recognize Cat Williams for who Cat Williams is. Like I can't even remember how many Netflix specials he has, but I think he might even have the most. I did appreciate that. Tell the people home. I thought wrong. they was lying, and um, <laughs> yeah. 
This particular alcohol is stronger than you think it would be, probably by about two. And unbelievably smoother and milder by the same maybe 30% than you could possibly expect. And unlike cognacs the world over, this one doesn't taste like wood at the end and it doesn't taste like it's got artificial colors and it doesn't taste like it's got artificial flavors. About the relapse. Uh, it's, a, it's a fine product. He's a connoisseur, you can tell. He's a, he's a cognac connoisseur. He understands the method that goes into making cognac. Right. Well, as a comedian, you get free drinks at the club. <laughs> so all comedians either turn out to be connoisseurs so, like myself right. or straight up and down alcoholics <laughs> like 60% of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. More like fucking 60% of the United States of America. I think it's like 175 million Americans are alcoholics, like which means basically hey, consuming an alcoholic drink every single day. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, you do whatever you want with your life. Thanks for stopping by the club. I understand you. that you're very, very busy. And for you to take time out of your busy schedule and stop in today, we really, really appreciate it here at Club Shay Shay. Thank so you thanks for so stopping much. by, Kat. And I needed you to know why I came by. Yeah, I need you to tell us why. People know I don't go everywhere. I'm not interested in talking to people unless it's like a Larry King or somebody of an amazing ilk that I would actually want to go talk to in real life. Okay. Um, I don't do it so I can sell product and I got things to sell, so let me come talk. Um, you have a great product here, and as a fan base, we love the attention that you spend on the guests. We, we love how much work you've done, how well you know them, how prepared you are. The same things that we liked about you in football. <laughs> you brought that on over to here, and that's uh, why it resonates. And the reason I had to come is because you made a safe place for the truth to be told. You know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate and that. And I have watched all of these lowbrow comedians come here and disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight up lies. <laughs> I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here lying to you about it. You gonna set the record straight? Now also, see how he mentioned black Hollywood? There is a difference within Hollywood. I know some people aren't gonna like it, but there is. like. I have a feeling he's about to explain it because he just started mentioning Black Hollywood. So uh, let's just see what he says about it. Are you kidding me? You let Ricky Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday after next, the one I was in. I <laughs> no, wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that <laughs> happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. But this man told you he had Cat Williams role. He was gonna be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was gonna be fr was gonna be the Santa Claus. Now let's, three quick points. Three quick. You mean in Hollywood they cast a five foot five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds. <laughs> That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was going to play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? Well, I didn't know he, he shouldn't be able. You wouldn't let a, 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 a athlete that been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man, you stole that. Oh, so he could get wow. his name in the same sentence with a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody, it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He couldn't have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was. Sir, no one. Why no? He was with KD. He beat up Terry Crews. Why nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he, what? So Ricky, Ricky Smiley, 
knows this. And I don't know why he would lose a child and come on the air and start lying. That's why people believe in rituals right there. It's because, well, why would he lie? I don't know why liars lie, but I can tell you this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy right. where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never yeah, funny, yeah. no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. That's crazy because I don't know if you're familiar with the movie or not, but they did switch it around. And I believe a lot of Cat's uh, acting was improv, too. Uh, but he ended up grabbing a wrench from behind the, uh, the toilet and grabbing the dude's nuts and cranking them. So he did steal the show Like when it comes to that movie. I mean, Craig and Day Day, of course, were the main characters. But, yeah, Cat Williams definitely had a part that was just, you couldn't match it. There's no way. Ricky Smiley, he just ran around as a cracked out Santa Claus. So considering that's the real story, why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was gonna play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. Why that wasn't in the bloopers? Why? And, and here's the other thing. Everything that Money Mike said, Cat Williams wrote. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? You can't say my lines, I wrote them. That's how I already know that I'm going to be funnier than you. What he told everybody was, Cat Williams, eh, eh, don't nobody know who he is? I'm on the radio. I'm with Steven Said. Everybody know me. That's what he told everybody that would listen to on the set. That's the truth of the matter. He was so egregious, not now, then. He was so egregious that, and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred years. He was so egregious, I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? Did he wear a dress in it? You bet he did, it's in my contract. Why would you put that in your, put his, in your contract, Cat? That's where he's the, a believable actor. Damn. Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. They play good women. And I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. So that's why... Be Look at the way he looks at the camera. Look at the way he looks at the camera. Women. And I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. So that's why, because when we released that clip and he said that, you responded because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to play, play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So That he knows is a lie. So why would he say it? Because he's a liar. Nobody knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. Cedric did the same thing. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018? You came to see me at the comedy store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. Like, what doesn't line up? I, this is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, 
And then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit. When you start name dropping like that, that's when somebody's telling the truth. Then you ask it, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over KB and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You would have to have a range. I played a lot of characters, 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. I don't know. I don't know, Cat. We might not. <laughs> Shane's like, I don't know if we can do this shit. I'll let you drink anymore the way you, you, I mean, we ain't even got. I'm not fueled by alcohol. I've had a sip less than you. The truth don't need motivation. I'm just saying I can't let these dudes lie. Cedric's sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He over here look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. He can't even get his arms off his stomach sitting over here. Why I'm not a movie star. What? It's a situation. He never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. Right. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he's write doing jokes. An album. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Can I say that again for the audience? They're so bad that they're not available on Netflix or Tubi. You don't Yo, dude. Cedric's getting it. Steve Harvey's getting it. <laughs> we're, we're 11 minutes in. What's up, A Fox? Is it E Fox? A Fox. Yo, Cliff, been watching you for two years now. Happy you're back after the suspension. Fuck you, too. You're an amazing influence. Greetings from Belgium. Hey, shout out to Belgium. Thank you so much for the love, my friend. I appreciate the donation, but don't forget, like, I do all this shit out of love in my heart, man. But thank you for the donation. I appreciate you. Yeah, you YouTube has it where I can't turn monetization on, so I'm just not making anything right now. So it is what it is. YouTube hates me, dude. You don't think Sam's a good, a good comedian? The world doesn't think that, <laughs> sir. I have 12 comedy specials. He has four specials that are not available on Netflix or Tubi. Tubi. It seems to me, Kat, that you had a lot to get off your chest. No, no. You wanted to set I the record straight. Winners are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. I don't say any of these things if my name is not breached by these people on your platform. They, if you give them a liar a platform to lie, then I, I'm not being messy by saying, hold on, that never happened. It's untrue. And there are hundreds of witnesses for each thing I'm saying. So let me ask you this. What is your relationship with Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley and Cedric the Entertainer as you sit here currently? They've. For 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that, listen, they got a gang on that side. They know what it is. They know who the gang is. Why Earthquake not in movies? Because he's illiterate. He can't read. And they found that out when they gave him a show and put the cards in front of him. But Earthquake is hilarious. But oh my God. He said he's illiterate. He's a stand-up comic too, in case you're unfamiliar. Like all of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets. And this is the age of truth. And, and, and the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies. Uh, cats on drugs. <laughs> Where are the stories? Why is there no story of anybody who ever sold a drug to me, did a drug with me, was around me when I was inebriated? I got five daughters. I got five sons. Why would we tell these ridiculous stories? Because it's com competition. You you feel like, well, why comedies, comedy guys can't just get along? Yes. Why, why, why didn't you get along with the other teams you were competing against? If you're a Denver Bronco, why you don't get along with the Cowboys? Something wrong with you but i don't disagree i don't no, dislike no, all the no. cowboys cat damn you like this no like, that's okay, not what committee do you did like? did you play against the team yes i've taken 46 comedians with me on the road 46 okay i'm not the wow. comedian you can give that to i only put on comedians that are funnier than me anybody that ever told you differently was a fat phase on liar
There's nobody <laughs> like you? me in the business. Faison just called it straight. Faison said that <laughs> getting a Netflix special is easy. I have 12 specials. Guess how many Faison got? Zero? I don't think Vazon has any Netflix. I, I, I can remember. Zero. <laughs> Why is he allowed to have conversations about real <laughs> stand-up people? We do not let people who are on the juice discuss real athletes. That's all. As a so I like the way he keeps on bringing that back to Shannon. Like, look, like you're going to sit here and, you know, accept people talking shit about me, but let me flip this so you understand. This is like someone saying they're the greatest when they're taking steroids and you're all natural and you're, you're doing it the right way, but they're doing it the wrong way. Man, that's fucked up the way he's flipping it too to like try to help Shannon understand it. As a journalist, that's all. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I don't have, harbor any resentment to any of these entities because I can't be jealous. I've never seen them have anything that I ever wanted. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in man, tw on. Listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. <laughs> Nobody's ever talked to her and that she's never been interviewed anywhere. And now understand, I'm not talking about one person. What I just told you applies to seven people. How they all end up with that. That's, That's part of what you get. I came in this business saying I was going to expose. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things because why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. Because they got something to hide. I heard him mention Diddy, too. Now, Diddy, somebody I actually met, and I, with what's going on with Diddy, I mentioned little things here or there, like in my videos, but I haven't gone into detail, but, but I can't, because I can't, but, yeah, he, he's about to be in some serious trouble. The truth. Rightfully so. Truth is the light. I need to have another one of these. Amen. <laughs> I'm have another one of these. <laughs> uh, I kind of, <clears throat> I'm getting on here. All right. Uh, after that, I don't really kind of know where to go. Let me one more time. <laughs> mm, mm. I don't know where to go. We good now? What's up, Hot Wire? Because the people want to know, why would he get blackballed? Yeah, oh, because, I was because, that. because in 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing. You will tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that. I value that. I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know, and they all know it. They all know it. Why? Because you don't make me the villain. Not the guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard drug in his life and don't have no stories of doing nobody dirty. And they'll just go out and they'll lie. The, the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. Look at my IMDb. It will show you that no studio has ever lost money with me on the script. How? That's why I'm saying that's why I can't let Ricky Smiley say he was supposed to play Money Mike because I wrote the words for Money Mike. I designed the hair for Money Mike. I collaborated with the wardrobe department and made outfits to make sure that no one in America would be wearing what Money Mike was wearing. I told him to go get the prowler. I then told him to paint it purple. I told him don't have an actor as playing a pimp. We could get an actual pimp Archbishop Magic Don Juan to play like I. I did far too much work for somebody to come years later and try to tag along just for their own self-aggrandizement. Why didn't Cube set the record straight? Terry Crews could have set the record straight. Mike Epps could have set the record straight. Why none of them set the record straight? That's what you were supposed to ask him when he told you those lies that but no I didn't one's know ever heard. Lie. 
Right, but he's telling you something no one's ever heard of. Nobody has ever heard. Oh, Matt Aff Ben Affleck and Matt Damon was in a movie, and somebody said, y'all should switch roles. And, like, this is a business. But that's the thing, Cap. <laughs> Normally, when people are giving you information, I'm thinking I'm hearing it for the first time, and they're giving information no one else knows or has ever heard. So I'm taking them at face value. These are like, this is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey was never homeless. When he, Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in cash. Damn, I didn't know that. I always thought Steve Harvey's story was that he was living in a car and he had to like do a show and drive out to Florida and didn't have enough money. What? That was Cat Williams' background? Like, I know a bit about Cat, but I didn't like go in detail and ask him about his life story and doing five shows a week. They, they just tell the stories. This, my, thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget that? <laughs> you told us it was her. Then you went and married somebody else that think like a man. Like, what are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. That uh, uh, Guy Tory did a beautiful special about the comedy store and Fat Tuesday, where he said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made all lies. Steve and Cedric never performed at the comedy store at all. Tiffany was only seen at the Laugh Factory. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy he club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading. No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Maybe people don't understand the definitions of these words. The industry plant. He's talking about an industry plant. When the industry picks you out and puts you in a position that sets you up for success and you're going to do whatever they basically tell you. For the money, of course. You're going to get paid pretty well, but you're going to have to the term selling your soul is where it comes from. Like you're not really selling your soul, but you're pimping yourself out, basically. He just did his documentary with Chris Rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. Yeah, it was. So how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? At the store. It did happen. It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jesse Smollett gonna keep lying until you say we don't believe you. Jesse Smollett. Like it's important in the checks and balances of the universe. And if you're not familiar with Jesse Smollett, he was here in Chicago and he faked. He is basically a fake, he faked an assault. He hired like these two big ass. I don't know if they were Nigerian or African, whatever the fuck they were. And he walked around like with a noose around his neck saying that like some Trump people basically whooped his ass and shit. It, it never happened. It was people he hired. He lied about it. And he basically got dropped from everywhere. That liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What powerful. do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. And that's why you two won't beat me. That's why. Do you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? If what I say ain't the case. It's a cabal. It's a it's a consortium. They they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, boy, and see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you it won't. Wow. Because Shannon Sharp got to be a different person than that other person. Absolutely. And he always was. That doesn't change when right. I change teams. That remains the same.
That's how a legacy is built. So all of these shortcut takers, I, I was, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. God damn! Came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. Came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there, it's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they did to get there. <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Mm. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. I can't do that because I. Uh, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand-up anymore oh my god oh, i gotta turn my heat off dude it's getting hot as fuck in here dude i, can't, it's, I gotta chill this place out hold on All right, so look, there's something else I want to discuss, too. And I, I probably shouldn't, but it's not that big of a deal. When you do sign a non-disclosure agreement and you're working with the company, be it Hollywood or with a record label, they will pay you. It's not just like you have to sign this document. They will pay you, but it might come with certain stipulations. And you could agree or not agree, and you can get blackballed, or you could only be limited with your work and stuff like that. So I know Cat's not lying about that. So I've been there. I don't know, man. All I know is it's getting hot as fucking here. I'm only 23 minutes in. I need energy drinks. I need to wake the fuck up. This shit's getting crazy. What's up, crazy cat lady? How you doing? Thank you, everybody, for hanging with me. You got a sub on Switch. Ooh, I'm glad to have you, kitty. Thank you so much. Let's go. All right, let's see. Cat spitting truth right now, man. I did not know Steve Harvey's hair was so big. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? That sounds... You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? So on the behalf of Bernie, I, I would have to say what I have to say. Have you, have wait, 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 wait. So Steve Harvey called up trying to take Bernie Mac's part from Ocean's Eleven. I did not know that. So on the behalf of Bernie, I, I would have to say what I have to say. Have you ever been? On, have you ever been on tour with any of these guys? The guy, I, every guy I mentioned to you is not funny out there in real life. So you, no. <laughs> Faison's never done his own tour in 30 years. Steve Harvey don't do stand-up no more. Cedric doesn't write. I'm sorry, he doesn't write. Ricky Smiley has been playing the same old black woman forever. Like, you can't get a young fan base with that. Like, you gotta be doing karaoke around the country to make that work. Right. And he is. And what he means by that is a target audience. You want to try to, when, when you're an artist, you want to kind of target your audience to be between the ages of like eight and 18 because they'll be with you for a lot longer than somebody who just joins up and say they're 40 years old. You see what I'm saying? You'll have them a lot longer in your career. But I'm a stand up comedian. This is my 19th 100 city tour. 
I'm not going to have a conversation with these lazy bums that'll take a shortcut at any point. Yes, it's easier for you to juice than to get in the gym, but you don't get to bring that body in here talking crazy. You talk about how good you look. What? No, no, there's too many comics out there that are putting their life on the line to tell these jokes, man. Okay. Let's get to your upbringing. We're going to circle back and we'll get some. Uh -huh. I want to protect him real quick, because you had said for the Kings of Comedy, it was in 2018, 2019, but did you mean 1999? Because it came out in 2000, so I just want to make no, sure. I no, no, no. So what I meant to say was, remember, he said, I couldn't do stand-up anymore. I had seven TV shows. I said he didn't have any of those TV shows at the time. I know, you're talking about, you talking about Cedric. Joke stealer from Cedric. Yeah, Cedric. Oh, okay, so, so, okay. 2018, 2019, but it came out in 2000, so I just want to make sure. You okay, no, 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 no. What comes out in 2000? The, the, the original Kings of Comedy. Right, my, I'm on BET's Comic View, and they're using this as the commercial in 1998. Okay. That's why I'm saying, yeah. So, so if I, yeah. yeah. So if I yeah. said the dates no, wrong, just, yeah. Just, so yes. you, let's go ahead and clear that up. Okay. You said, yeah. But see how he has dates, time, recollection, uh, recoll uh, recollection, and like titles of like where he was actually at, what commercials have been spun on what days at what time. Like that's how you know somebody's telling you the exact truth. If somebody starts fucking giving you details like that off the cuff. Three, they either deserve a fucking Oscar or they're telling you the fucking truth. I had Cedric on here and I asked him about the joke stealing. Yeah. And he said the timeline doesn't add up. Correct. To your to to that point, you say. Right. So he thought that I was just a no name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. Right. It had done so well on BET's Comic View that they had made it part of the commercial. So part of the commercial of make sure you tune in to BET was you seeing me doing this joke. Right. And this joke is one of those jokes in comedy where you set it up and it takes a little longer to set it up. It takes about three minutes. But then you're just hitting them with jokes after right. that because you don't have to set it up. Right. Uh, Mark Curry had already helped me work on this joke because I thought it was good because I was getting a standing ovation on it. He had me go back in the lab and help me craft it to be an even more powerful joke. So this is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke, and it's my last joke, and it's my closing joke. Okay. But you know how much like that takes to say, like, hey, somebody help me mold a joke? Like, a lot of people won't admit, like, hey, like, I had somebody help me with this, or I had somebody help me with that. That's where my profession comes in when it comes to writing songs. A lot of people don't want to admit having writers help them, but it, it's a common practice in all of the industry including stand-up, anything that's involved with writing, even writing books. Okay. 1998, I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy. And he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. Him and Steve had already apologized for me, so I gave him a pass for a decade. Why would you sit here and be like, I talked to, I saw Cat 30 times, <laughs> and Cat didn't do, as I stand before you, Shannon. I would have bust Cedric's stomach. <laughs> there was nothing that would have kept me from one of these in, in that patch right there. Like, are you kidding me? Why would you downplay me like that? Why did I give you a pass if you were just going to lie? And so that's what I'm saying. Like, they're all a group. Cedric, Steve, Ricky, they've been a group. Everybody knows that. They've been aligned. And, and there are these alliances in comedy. And if you stand against them, then they sometimes have a problem. But... We don't let that change the content because that's all you know me for is that I'm quite likely to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. God. Can you believe we're this deep into the NFL season? We NFL, I want to talk about it. The Bears fucking suck. Talk about my Bears right now, Shannon, with your perfect teeth. In Ohio, hmm. what was Cat Williams' upbringing like? 
Your parents were Jehovah Witness. You were a, a prodigy. You were brilliant. You talked to me that you got accepted to college at seven years of age. You could read fluently at three years of age. So having that kind of knowledge, having that kind of uh, uh, of, of, of of prodigy, or so what was so? I mean, was it? What was your upbringing? How how was it? How was life as Cat Williams crunk coming up? Um, I I. I was often confused because I knew things and I wasn't sure how I knew them. Um, I knew things that I f felt like I don't have a reason that I, I know this, but I, I love to read. Um, I was voracious because they told me when I was young that knowledge was powerful, uh, that knowledge was power and I, and I had studied powerful people and I, I, um, I really believe that I, I, I immediately my next project was to read the whole encyclopedia set. So when you're like six, seven years old, you read the whole encyclopedia set, you think you're one of the smartest people in the world, right. only to get out in the world and find out you don't know anything, you know? So it, um, it, was a, it was a confusing time, but yeah, I had a childhood. I was, I was grown, but I, I, at five years old, I was in front of five, 10,000 people given a performance with a full suit and tie on <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah. it hasn't it had it, it it came full circle um for my life i knew that the applause and um the giving of information and laughs and truth to people somehow benefited them and also benefited you and um yeah, so when they would ask me what I wanted to be, everything that I would say that I wanted to be was something that didn't exist. And they would never give me credit for it because I needed to say um, a doctor or a lawyer. lawyer, but that's not what I wanted to be. So your parents weren't as supportive as you would have hoped because you were wanting to be things when you got older that they had no knowledge of or it didn't exist at the time. No, it, it wasn't that. It, it was... Um, I'm saying I'm <clears throat> I'm almost 100 years old right now. But if we go outside right now, I can run a 4340 or, or a sub. I can do a 416 if I'm Oh, there's short. Jimmy John's across the street. We can order a sub. <laughs> but, um, oh, you've been on the submarine. That what you sub? So, um, Captain Williams can actually run very fucking fast. I've seen it in person. The dude can run. I can do a 416 if I'm Oh, there's Jimmy John's across the street. We can order a sub. <laughs> but, um... Oh, you've been on the submarine. Is that what you sub? So, um... So back then, it was even greater. So you got this guy that all the coaches want to play. Man, Cass, I don't do that. Hold on, because I'm, I'm five foot five in the fifth grade. I've been this size my whole <laughs> life. Like, there was a portion of school where I was one of the big dudes. Like, it just, as soon as everybody caught their growth spurt, I was out of there. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm saying I was a competitive individual. Mm -hmm. My father was an athlete. I can see like, that. Like, like, no, I've been 145 pounds my whole career. That's why I never bothered when they said, you cats on drugs. I knew, how you gonna prove that? I'm, <laughs> <laughs> My body is a temple. I've been, I've been the same size since I was ten. <laughs> like, what do you? Yeah, like I, I, ha, I haven't, ch I haven't changed off this pivot foot. This has always been who I was before stand up or anything. But it was a, um, it was an interesting childhood. I, I, I appreciate my parents, even though um, I couldn't live within the religious frameworks of right. what they had set up. Um, but that was more not wanting to live a double life and not want to embarrass my family. You know what I mean? Because I read where a form of punishment for you is that they would take books because you mentioned you were such a voracious reader. And a form of punishment was when they would they take the books for them because you could read fluently. You, you you told me how at like three or four years old, you could read, 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 not not just a, a little child's book, but you could read, read. Well, I'm saying when we when we go to Haiti to do missionary work, understand that my mother and my father, nobody that's there with us speaks French. And, I mean, it speaks Creole and reads French. So I'm in charge of everything from the housing to the cars to the the gardener. Like, I, 
I'm saying so. I'm not just reading. I'm reading in multiple languages. Like I'm How probably, do you I'm probably reading three thousand books a year, from the time that I'm eight years old to the time that I'm twelve. No, no, no fiction books at all. I'm only reading nonfiction. You could drive at twelve. You received a full scholarship to the National Science Academy in Dayton, Ohio. But you failed, so you couldn't become, so you would become ineligible. Why didn't you want to take that opportunity? I didn't see it as an opportunity. When I got in there, all the students were wearing lab coats, and it seemed very confined and restricted, and nobody seemed like they were having fun. It just seemed like everybody was smart. I, I didn't want that. That was that wasn't what I was signing up for at all. And plus, um, I thought that I was. I, Jesus was my big homie. So you know how you get a story about a dude joined the gang and you get a big homie, right? Mm -hmm. Like at this particular point in my life, I'm my thought is that the Bible is the greatest book that's ever been written. Okay. That it houses the truth and that it gives you this story of Jesus and that I'm supposed to be like him. Okay. So I, it's already in my head that as soon as I get 13, I'm leaving. Mm. You 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 at 13, you not only leave like, OK, mom, I'm moving out. You move from Ohio to Florida on your own. You weren't afraid. I mean, you like, did you? No, hold did, on. Hold did you on. not don't, have a, don't, what, So what don't. were you going? So what were you going to do when you got to Florida? Don't say I wasn't afraid. There's no such thing uh, as a human being of not being afraid. Okay. But there are certain human beings that understand that being afraid in no way stops you from doing what you got to do. Okay. Yeah, fear is a good thing. Fear is a driving factor. Fear can make you accomplish so many things that you couldn't even imagine. You just got to be able to harness that anxious the anxiety that comes with fear and put it into something positive. And I'm sorry about, uh, I see you guys over here on uh, YouTube talking about how Twitch is hitting you with ads. I'm sorry about that, man. That's Twitch just lining up the ads. YouTube's not allowing me to monetize anything, so I'm doing this all for free. But it's cool. I like to just hang with you guys and watch this. So uh, YouTube's got my whole channel fucked up. But I appreciate you guys hanging with me. It means a lot. So um, I, w I was afraid, um, but I couldn't be that afraid because I knew what had happened with Jesus. I knew how it worked out. I, I, I knew that I wasn't in the wrong with how I was feeling, and I knew that I, I didn't have any bad intentions in it. Right. So I trusted God that it would work out. Why Florida? Um, because I, if you're raised in Ohio, the one thing on your list is... I'm going to get away from snow and I'm going to get as far. I want to go. Tell me the place. I literally went to a truck stop and I asked all the truck drivers where they was going. And it was one guy going to California and it was one guy going to Florida. And they told me how long it was going to take. And so that's why I ended up in Miami. Because how did you get there? You caught a bus? Or no, I just told you. I was at the truck stop. I, so he you let hitchhike? Me, I got in. I didn't hitchhike. I got in the back of the dude's 18 wheeler, me and my Rottweiler puppy and my suitcase. <laughs> yeah, because I was I probably had twenty five hundred dollars on me. Like I like I was shoveling snow and cutting grass. Like I always had pockets full of money. When did you make the decision that you were going to leave Ohio? and go somewhere, and it ended up being Florida, so, but when so did you 13, know that right? you were leaving Dayton, Ohio, going to Florida? In my father and I's last interaction, um, somebody could have not made it, and we both understood that was all bad. What was the disagreement about? Um, Mm. If, if you t say that my family is very religious, let just say I'm not. So anything that I, I'm going to do is not is going to fall out of the guidelines. Right. But I'm not. And that's the hard thing about with religious families, too, is sometimes they start moving the goalpost on you and making up their own rules within the religion that you're studying as well. And it can be very difficult having super religious parents trying to dictate what you do and how you live your life. So, damn. I'm not going to let you tell me what I'm going to be, Even, <clears throat> especially if what you're saying is wrong. I can't condone wrong. And if I find out that something is wrong and I tell you it's wrong and you don't back me. Yeah, that's so, what it is. Even as a young child, you were willing to tell your parents that some of the things that you're saying 
doesn't coincide with what I've been reading in, in, in the Bible. No, no. Very simply, don't don't try to disfellowship me for sexual acts and I'm a virgin. Sorry, God, don't make mistakes. You don't get two times to fuck me over. What do you mean you went to God and he told you I was guilty? <laughs> you just lied on God. So long. That's it. There's no conversation. Deuces. Damn. That's so that, what it was. That's when you made the decision. After yes. that conversation right there, you say, no, nah, I, can't, I can't live under this roof. It wasn't a conversation. It was an altercation. In the altercation, I love my father. My father loved me. But we are two men at it. That it'll never be the same again. You can't sleep comfortably around me. And I can't sleep comfortably around you. How similar are you to your father? No, um, I don't I don't know. He's a great man. I, I'm, I'm saying uh, my, it seems my, like y'all butt he, y'all butted heads. Right. But I'm saying that generally happens with a father son dynamic. It was just that um, religious relationships are always difficult right. in families. And they always are. Before it got to the point, because the dynamic, he's father, your son, before that dynamic and you step up on his level and you challenge him, you felt it was best for you to leave. No, no, no. I'm not being challenged. I'm being beat to death. Oh, he was abusive. I didn't say that. I said we were in an altercation. Oh, <laughs> I see what you did. There. I saw what you did. There. I saw what you did. That cat. Yeah. I saw what you did. You was in an altercation. You didn't say you lost. You said you was in an altercation. I in no way gave you the impression that I won anything. I'm the one leaving. I'm out of bounds. This is his house. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, so you, as long as I'm going to be under his roof, there are certain the things that I... That's respect as fuck, though. Like saying, like, hey, like, you know, we had an altercation. I'm not going to say who won, who lost. But at the end of the day, it was his house. He paid the bills. So... I made it my goal to get the fuck out. That's the only way I could escape this. I'm going to have to do. Right. And the only way that's going to change is either this or that. Right. And I, I, I'm saying I had two younger brothers. Like, I'm not, I'm not an unreasonable person. Like, I don't have any mental issues whatsoever, despite what they lead people to believe. You know, I make good, pretty good decisions. Were you not... But that's what they always do. Think about even with um, Dave Chappelle. Like saying, oh, he's crazy. He went to Africa, all this shit. And then now look at him. He comes back. Like he had to keep on turning down tons of money for his show. Because they wanted him to do shit that he didn't want to do. Which is probably shit that Cat Williams is talking about right now. Damn. Uh, so how was their relationship with your father? Were you not afraid to leave them? Well, I asked because it it went all the way to the actual department. So it was actually going to be something. Um, and when I asked them if they could just make sure that my brothers didn't get separated and what have you, um, they said they couldn't make those type of guarantees that they weren't really sure what would happen if this went down. And so part of leaving was the hope that it will be okay for them because not, none of them experienced what I experienced. I'm saying I'm the oldest. It's a lot riding on right. me. I'm supposed to at least religiously hold down the family's name Correct. at this household. Right. You know what I mean? How much older are you than the baby and the knee baby? Like a lot older. Like I, if I'm I 12, think, I 13. Think, yeah, they're five and In Pampers. Wow. In Pampers. Right. You go to Florida. You tell the story of her. You, you were homeless. And right. somebody else told the story, said they were homeless. And you said they they hijacked your story. Steve now, I don't, hey, I don't. At 13, I shouldn't have to tell you I'm homeless. I'm in a I'm, I'm in Miami, Florida. I have no family members in Florida. I couldn't buy a house if I wanted to. I couldn't get an apartment if I wanted Correct. to. I don't have a credit history. Like, 
this is not a stretch for me to say that I'm homeless. I'm, I'm living in a park in Coconut Grove. The park still exists to this day. Mm -hmm. For eight hours a day, I would get up and go to the library and study for eight hours a day to increase my education. And then I would leave out of there and go to the marina and steal car radios and make $2,000 almost daily. Like I had a routine. This so you really could have played that Santa old thief in Santa Claus. You could have played it. No, the Santa Claus wasn't a thief. The, Santa, yeah, he was, he the Santa Claus. You can't tell me. I read the script. Ricky Smiley told you he didn't read the script. The the Santa Claus was a crackhead. He just had that outfit on. Exactly. Exactly. See, I said it in the beginning. He was a crackhead. The the Santa Claus was a crackhead. He just had that outfit on. That's what I couldn't have played. Okay. <laughs> like I couldn't have played a black guy that got raped in the bathroom. Right. So he changed it. So at any point in time, you like, man, I made a mistake, man. I should have stayed my butt in Ohio, man, because this is, man, this ain't what I signed up for. I didn't experience anything once I left home that I hadn't signed up for. If anything, it saved my life. Me being homeless for that small period of time allowed me to see all of the people that were in that situation and to see that these were lawyers and doctors and, 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 and teachers and that these people were white and black and Asian and Indian. And the only thing that all of these homeless people had in in, in common was um, they made a bad decision and aligned themselves with drugs. And I interviewed them all. What drug? What? And guess what, Shannon? What? Nobody had a great story. Nobody had a great story of what meth had done for them, what crack had done for them, what cocaine had done for them, what heroin had done for them, what speed had done for them. Nobody had them stories. Everybody's story was I had my life together. And then I decided to do this dumb thing. And I lost my wife. I lost my house. I lost my cars. I lost my reputation. And now I'm now out here sucking penis in the woods. What? Talk about scared straight. You ain't got to worry about me. <laughs> if it ain't weed or nicotine, you won't see me touching it. I don't want no parts. I done seen what these things can do to people. Anything that take over your free will is the devil itself. Have you ever thought about what your life would have been had you stayed? Damn, anything that takes over your free will is the devil itself. Is the devil itself. Have you ever thought about what your life would have been had you stayed in Dayton, Ohio? No, that, that's like asking somebody that's in the NBA for 14 years, like, what would have happened if you didn't come to the NBA? Oh, I shudder to think. I, I, I thought it was what I was made for. I thought it was what I was built for. Anybody that knows me will tell you that when they first met Cat Williams, when I was Cat in the Hat, and they tell these stories about how he changed his name. Look, the truth of the matter is Disney sued me. Yeah, I was Cat in the Hat. They sent me a cease and desist letter and I'm not even making twenty five thousand dollars a year. And the mega company Disney has sent me a cease and desist telling me I can't use any variations of that name. Fine. I'm Cat Williams. That's all that happened. I have been this same product the entire time. They will tell you when they first saw me doing stand up, I was just like this. This is what I bring. This is my style. When did it, when did you know you was going, you wanted, were you always funny? Did you always want to be a comedian? How, did you stumble on a comedian ship? No, I, I, I loved what they did. And so I studied them, all of them. I studied all of the white comedians because I wanted to know why is Monty Python funny? Why is Don not so talented? I wanted to know what is George Carlin's thing? Like where, d so I studied love all of the drug. comedy masters regardless of the field because I loved t 
to laugh. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that these people were making a great living at doing this. I thought this is just what they did. They tell jokes. They're funny people. But I loved the craft. And that's why when I got into the craft, I thought it was my obligation to make sure that I kept writing new material so much that it forced these comedians to stop doing the set they've been doing for 10 years and keep writing some new stuff. And I knew that if I could get that to take on, that most of these bums would have to just quit comedy because they can't keep up. They're not going to keep writing an hour worth of material. Right. I've written an hour worth of material 19 times. They're not going to do it. Why? Because they're not creative writers. They want to get somebody else and have them write it and put it together. So, so if I'm listening to you correct, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the best thing that ever happened was the internet because now they have to, because normally, like you said, you could do a set and you do that, do that, that set in Kansas city. People ain't heard it in San Francisco. People ain't heard it in Miami. They ain't heard it in Detroit, Chicago, Atlanta, so forth and so on. Now you do a set. It's on the internet. Somebody heard it. So you can't do a set and make it, make it last three months, four months. Well, It, it doesn't allow the regular comic the ability to grow is the real problem. Like mm -hmm. the part of comedy is me taking these jokes in January and by March, I've begun to craft this joke. Okay. It's not as simple as it was when I wrote it. It was just da 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 da. But now it has the complexities of the fact that I'm having to deliver this to an East Coast audience, a down South audience, a Midwest audience, a Utah audience, a Colorado audience. And so it begins to take on a different complexion because you're having to deliver it to different people. Okay. And so so this is what sharpens your joke. You then take those sharpened jokes and make a special, not you just randomly take some. So it's a process. You don't allow them the process if the first time the guy did the joke, now that's his joke and the joke is everywhere. That just sets it up for people to steal. So how many times must you tell a joke before you master it? It's different for everybody. How many times have you had to sleep with a woman before you're done with her? <laughs> That's not fair. If it's great, never. <laughs> if, if, it, it, if it ceases to have usefulness, so it has been spoken. His analogy was way better than mine. But it's way out of my field. Though. Again, I'm not a stand-up comic. Right. I, was, I, I read that you was raised in, in, in Florida. You had some some help, some ladies of the night. No, no, no. So, That's yeah. not true. No, yeah, that whole pimple, story pimple, doesn't pimple. take place in Florida. That story takes place in Oklahoma City. Okay. So after I'm in Florida, I then join, um, I try to join the Marine Corps and they won't accept me because I'm, Bro, too, I'm, too, I'm, I'm too young and I've lied and told them I'm 16 and my family's moving down and I don't have my ID, but it's coming. And so they <laughs> let me go to the boot camp. Da, da, da. That's not going to work now. Okay. So I've learned that lesson. Right. So then I get this job selling stuff door to door. Um, across the country. And so I've been to all 50 states. Again, I'm 13, 14 years old. Um, so I did that. At, while I'm doing that, one of the places I'm at, I'm in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And I've decided I'm going to stay here because of meeting these ladies that you're talking mm -hmm. about and that situation. Ladies of the night. I don't know at the time why that's important in my life or why it's something I should be doing or any of that. But now later on, it certainly helps me in formulating Money Mike for Friday After Next. Right. And a pimp named Slickback uh, for the Boondocks. Mm. San you, Oklahoma, so San Francisco, Oklahoma, Sacramento. From Florida, you moved to the West Coast. After, so you traveling. When did you set up shop on the West Coast? All How right. old were you there? So I, I guess I'm uh, 18 or younger. And I, um, once, once I have my, once, once I have a child. You could tell that like so much shit was going on at that time that he really has to like think back and reflect on everything. He's like recollecting everything. He, everything probably just seemed like it was moving so fast because 
as he said, he had such a routine. He had so many things going on at once that like he probably has a hard time remembering all this stuff because he was always hustling, always on the move. Child, I realized that um, I can't. It's a lot of things that I could use to make money that now is a no-go. So anything with street aspirations that I might have thought about pursuing or being good at, um, I now am a single parent and I got to redo this thing. So I need comedy to really work out for me right. and me and God go into um, extreme conversation where I'm explaining to him that I'm a crash out dummy if he don't send me a lifeline. Like I need something I can hold on to. Before I left Florida, I did stand up one time because we was trying to get in the club. I didn't have ID. So I said I was a comedian. They ended up having me do five minutes. But I kept that in my head that I had done that. When we get to Oklahoma, they're having a competition for stand up. And if you win, you get to go out on the road with uh, Jeff Foxworthy and Dan Whitney, who is Larry the Cable Guy, and Richard Jenny, and these great comics, you get to open for them. And once I did that, I realized, okay, as a comedian, I'm like way behind schedule. I done started this too late. All the funny guys are already funny and known names. Like, how am I gonna progress? So I realized that I, I, I do better with a white audience than I do with a black audience. And I, I'm not sure why that's occurring, okay. but the white audience likes me more. That's that's interesting. So when I move... Because there's a weird thing with like white people want to see how black people do things, which is a very weird thing. Even like when it comes to reaction videos, like say, say you have a country artist, right? For some reason, white people want to see how a black person is going to relate to their music or what they're going to say about their music, be it good or bad. It's just a very weird thing. Move to Sacramento is because Sacramento has a white and a black audience almost 50 50. That's okay. almost the makeup of Sacramento. So I live in Sacramento for two years until I get to the point where I am equally as funny if the room is black as I am if the room is white. Okay. That's not enough. Now I need to be one of the good ones when it comes to black comics. Mm -hmm. So now I have to move to Oakland and that's what lands me in Oakland for three years. Once I have dominated uh, male black comedy in Oakland to my liking, now I'm prepared to go to Los Angeles now. Now I know you can't throw me any curveballs. If it's a white audience, if it's a black audience, no matter what they are, I'm prepared to deal with all of the audiences. Do so you write jokes according to the audience that you're going to be in front of, or, mm -hmm. uh, or is your joke universal? Well, in, in the beginning, I part of my framework is that I'm tailoring every show to this audience. Okay. And that's how I was able to show my range and show that I was better than my competitors is that I'm Cat Williams, but I was still doing clean comedy. So I was still going to churches and doing 45 minutes of stand up at the church with no curse words, no sex drug material, no none of that, just straight stand up. And then I was doing everything else. And I at the regular club. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the range is that where when in Rome, do as the Romans do. So um, that's how I started. Um, but as you begin to get better, you begin to be able to speak to your entire fan base. And that's really what's been helpful is that I've been having the same conversation with my fan base for 12 comedy specials. Mm -hmm. Is that so. what set Cat Williams apart? Is your range? is that you can do a comedy, do 45 minutes in the church. I can go to a comedy club in front of 250, or I can go into an arena with 15,000. Um, that's range, because everybody can't do that, Cat. Well, if that's what range is called, then, then, then yeah, it's range. But I, I like the people I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it's not, it's not like um, it fans. can't be condescending. 
because I'm talking to my white male friend when I'm telling that white joke. Right. When I'm talking about this joke about this black lady, I know that black lady. That's who I'm talking to. I'm smart. So he's saying like, uh, when I tell you guys about writing music, it's the same thing. You're picking a target audience. So you're writing a joke. You're writing a bar or a phrase or a verse as if you're in that person's shoe. So like he just said, it can't be condescending. It can't be pretentious. You have to be in their shoes so they can relate and also respect what you're saying, even if it can be a little bit demeaning or crude. It, it has to. It's picking a target audience, or like he's saying, a, a particular person, making sure that that one person can connect. That means the rest of the room can connect as well. Smart. I'm 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 speaking to this fan base that I've been speaking to from the beginning. I already told them what I was on when I first came in. I told them they was going to come after me. They was going to cancel me. They was going to say did. terrible things about me and try to mess my life up. I, I said that coming in to stand up. I'm, I'm saying it. In my so you knew it was going to be. Yeah. It has to be. I know I'm going into the belly of the beast. How could I be naive? I know that I'm going into Satan's playground, but I'm trying to be so good that you got to bring me in so close that I can see who's doing what and what's going on in there. In San Francisco, you joined the nation. I was ever in San Francisco. I was in Oakland. You were in Oakland. Did you join the nation? Is that... Yeah, Minister, Honorable Minister Farrakhan and I have... Um, an extremely close relationship. He he refers to me um, as one of his sons. So, um, yeah, I, I spent a particular period of time. Let me explain. Yes. Because my particular background was already religious mm -hmm. and super strict, right? I didn't find out about other religions by reading about them. I went to their religion. I I... I don't want to learn from Jewish people from outside. I want to be in the synagogue. I want to. I, I don't want to learn about Muslim people from. I, I want to be in a mosque. I, I, I don't want to hear about the Baptist or the Pentecostal. I want to go to their church okay. and see. And so that was the religious discovery that I was on through that period in my life. When did you know you were funny? Hmm, probably. Um, about 10 years ago. Like, 10 years ago? Yeah, about 10 years ago. So you, didn't think, so you didn't think as a child, because obviously you said the very structured background, your family was very religious, so obviously you didn't get an opportunity. Um, and I, I mean, Yeah, like what? I never did a talent show. I was okay. never in any, any extracurricular activities. I was never in drama. I was never in band camp. I was never a boy scout. And like, you didn't stay in school like, long enough to get funny because you dropped. You understand. You understand. <laughs> so there was no, like, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't tolerate high school games. I didn't go to high school. I don't, I don't know how most of the games they think I play, I'm not even aware of them. But, I, but Kat, for you to get on stage, and yeah. like I said, a lot of people, like a lot of comedians, and I had a few here, yeah. they're like, okay, you know, I told jokes to get girls, I told jokes to, you know, get people to laugh at someone else. Yeah. But you, it's like, at, you say you did comedy one time in Florida. Yeah. And you had this other opportunity, like in Oklahoma, that they were going to take you out if you won the talent show. You was going to go on the road with these these well known comedians. And I did. But I'm just saying, how at, in Florida at 13, 14 years of age, you like 16? I can do that. Well, because I knew that there were a lot of other things I could do. Like when I looked at drug dealers, I thought I could do that. Yeah. You but that's easy. So I, <laughs> right. And who doesn't like that? <laughs> right. Huh? Yeah. I, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna make it. But now that I It ain't as easy as people make it seem. I'll tell you that right now. I gotta do it on this side. I, I but no, you your question was when did I think I was funny? I never was my biggest fan. I to this day I'm not the biggest fan. I'm a fan of comedy. I like great comedians. Like I like Chappelle. I like Patrice O'Neill. Like I like the greats of comedy because I do. Like I, I like Ron White. I like Bill Ingball. Like I know comics. Like people that did the craft, they raised me. I was 
touring with Steve Marmel and Richard Jenny, a real journeyman. Mm -hmm. So my comedy upbringing was standard. I thought you had to work all night, every night, all around the country, and you had to write jokes, and that you were trying to write jokes that other people weren't writing, and that your job was to be funnier. Like, I, people that know me will tell you, I've been on this. Like, I, I had a list of all the black comedians that were more famous than me. There was 300 of them on the list, and I had to be able to cross them all out before I could make it to the next level before I felt like I was funny enough to do that. And so I, I, I appreciate what competition does for sports and for my particular sport. And comedy is a sport. What gave you the confidence that you could get on stage? You remember I was five years old on stage. Okay. The, so but I was, in front of people, but, I no was but I was reiterating God's word at that point. Oh. Now I just have to make sure that the content is good. If the content is good, what part can I not do? I'm a vessel. He's given me these gifts to be able to do certain things. So I just want to utilize them in my craft. That's all. Do like you that. remember your first set? Humble. Mm hmm. How long? Five, ten minutes? No, no. Um, I, I think three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah. Standing ovation, booze. Hard to do just in one minute. Three minutes? Some applause, some jeers. No, none of that. They they applauded like I was a professional at it. But now looking back, I understand. Because you got to understand, they were all thinking, he don't even look old enough to be in here. And we don't have any black guys that live in this town. Right. Where did he come from? <laughs> and then he gets up there, and for three minutes, he's talking about the fact that he is the entire black community. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he is as disappointed in them. It looked like they looking for where the rest of them is. And so is he. And that was his set. But I understood from that point that the truth is really the commodity and the fact that... Um, we are all individuals and all separate and all our own islands, but not in real life. In real life, it's only five or six different types of people and you're going to see them everywhere that you go. And all like all my enemies all look the same in the eyes, whether it's Faison, Wanda, Ari Spears, they all look like. Man, what you got to get Wanda Sykes? You think I don't remember that? Sir. Wanda Sykes and Wanda Smith are two separate people. I mean, Wanda I, Smith. Wanda and, Smith. And I had only no, said one name, sir. Wanda, si w I, Wanda Sykes I'm is amazing. I love Wanda. And I agree. I love Wanda. That's I my agree. girl. My but I, I remember on the radio, you went on the radio interview. If I'm not mistaken, that's in Atlanta. Right. And you came on there with seemingly good intentions. And oh, she yeah. attacked you. It wasn't just that part. It was the fact that before I go in there, she has a conversation about, OK, now I just want to talk to you because you just won an Emmy for the city of Atlanta. And this is in Atlanta and they just want to hear about the Emmy and hear from you and to thank you for what you did putting the city on. Right. Okay. And we won't talk about your kids. We won't talk about jail. No cases. We ain't going to talk about none of that. Right and immediately gets in there and goes the opposite way. You can't flip up on me because you're an inferior comedian. I'm going to destroy you and I'm never going to call you out of your name. I'm never going to say anything disrespectful to people that look like you. I'm, I'm, it's a very thin line I got to call, but this lady is trying to embarrass me in front of a largely homosexual fan base. That's why she got canceled. Gay people don't take it kindly that you would, as a derogatory, call me gay. Gay people don't feel like it's derogatory. So why are you trying to shame me with something in a community I don't even belong in? There's no gay people saying I belong over there or been over there. You did but I have no hatred of over there, and how dare you? You did a number on it, though. Hey. You did a number on it. That, no, that's legendary. No, you either believe in <laughs> karma or you don't because I didn't even know any of the stuff that she had done to my fellow comedians until afterwards. I just know she, that it was a setup. Right. And, and remember, they, they tried to kill me this same weekend. Hold on, hold, hold, you gotta try to kill him. Let me see what happened. What happened with Cat Williams and Wanda Sykes?
Wanda Smith. Uh, Wanda Smith. Okay, so Wanda Smith is who we want at. Let me see. Let's see what this is. This is the exclusive security video from the Atlanta. That's not what I want to see, an exclusive fucking video. What the hell are you talking about? I'll do it on a different video. Fuck it. I just don't know exactly what he's referring to right now at this exact moment. Oh, shit. That's not it. 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 There we go. Sorry. I'm trying to figure out exactly what happened. But he destroyed somebody, it seems like, uh, live. Not in jokes. With a real gun in my real face on real camera. Whoa, 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 whoa. They tried to kill me this same weekend. Not in jokes. Oh, was this on the radio? I didn't hear what happened, but I heard. All right, so he got into a, a verbal tussle, I guess you could say, with somebody on the radio, this woman. And apparently he demolished her. And I think her husband showed up with a gun at his show and tried to shoot him, if I'm not mistaken. Real gun in my real face on real camera. Understand I'm losing my life for participating in something that goes along with my job. Like, this two comedians, what do you mean? And, and the world was okay with it because it was me. Had that happened to anyone else, the world went crazy when Will smack, smacked Chris. This is a person pulling a whole gun on a comedian in the confines of their job this is really a weird situation uh when they hate you that bad yeah yeah you felt she hated you at that moment because you you mentioned that she said it was going to be very professional oh you want an emmy congratulations you put the city on you own for the city yada 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 and now what did she mention anything about the emmy on camera I believe you saw the video and you know that none of that I took mean, place. Yeah. See, the, it, <laughs> <laughs> the issue is that um, all the comedians have to come do these radio stations right. because you have to sell your tickets. And so that means you have to go to the radio station. Yes. I, I don't go to the radio station and I don't make posts to sell tickets. I just don't. So he doesn't. You've not seen me. I'm. I haven't. I'm not here in some subservient position nope. where somebody sent me over. I'm. You here out of the kindness of your heart. You are. No, no. I'm saying. In, no, but in no, the interview. Radio, yeah, yeah. Yes. Situation. Yes. Yeah. Like, yes. Right. For sure. Yeah. And this person knew I wasn't there for that. Or. All right. Okay. Somebody just said. That the security footage was the incident. Right. This is the exclusive security video from the Atlanta Comedy Theater in Gwinnett County. You can see Wanda Smith and her husband by the front door. Watch as Cat Williams approaches. Words are exchanged, but no gun is put in Williams' face. But for some reason, Cat Williams runs away. If you want to have Wanda's jewelry, please uh, go to go sit, go, go or quick trip at any point. Here's the exchange between Wanda Smith and Cat Williams that led to the confrontation. You big on the radio. That's right. And you're, and you're big Turn in it prison. Down. And you're yes, big in prison. I've never been to prison. Uh, you have 19 felonies, times. no convictions. Yeah, Knock yeah. it off. Prison okay. and jail aren't the same. Now back to the video. <laughs> when police arrived, Lamora Sellers told police he had a gun and it was in the waistband of his pants, but that he never put it in William's face. But now watch the video again. Remember, Smith told police he had a gun in his waistband. Watch here. He seems to raise his shirt up as if to show something. Yeah. Yeah, he did. And that's what people will do, too. Is they'll kind of just, like, raise it up just to show you, like, hey, like, I'm strapped. Damn! Alright, thank you guys for correcting me in the chat. Yeah, it's... But how hard because you have to understand she is a female... And so you have to be careful. You have to hammer her with kid gloves. Sir, sir, <laughs> you want to go ahead and take that out? You don't want to be against equality, do you? No. You don't want to be against equality, do you? It, she attacked him. He defended himself. He walked in there. She tried to fucking blindside his ass. But you don't blindside somebody who has been studying fucking comedy their entire life selling out arenas. Man. You want to go ahead and take that out? You don't want to be against equality, do you? No, no. What you just said was <laughs> very unequal, sir. 
<laughs> Bruh, but I you... think maybe you've had enough of this. <laughs> <laughs> because I think I just heard you say but can't you, can't, that women are not equal and should be they, treated unequally. They and are, I, they want to be treated. You mean equal. as a comedian? No, no. They want. Listen, you understand, and I understand. Yeah. In certain situations, they want to be treated equal. Not all situations. And and what part of what you saw her get? Oh, she what, deserved everything no, no, you gave her. No. What part would have been different if she was a man? It would have just been more vicious. Yeah, that, that's, that's my point. I that's took, my point. I took all the vicious and venom away because it. I didn't have any. Plus, I understood. I'm not trying to offend black women with short hair. I'm not trying to offend heavyset women. This goes back to what he was saying earlier about how when he's cracking jokes, he's trying to make sure he can relate that. So it's almost like he's saying it to a friend, but now he understands that he's in a roast session, which is very common when you come up with your friends and shit like that. So she tried to roast him. He, he in turn, roasted the bitch back and then got offended and had her fucking husband pull up with a fucking strap. Hmm. I'm not trying to upset fellow comedians. I'm not trying to do any of that. And I can't, I am qualified to be able to do none of that and still eviscerate you because I'm smart enough to know that I need to say that you have gnarled fingers because I know your limited education means you don't know what the word means. So you can't possibly respond to it. You're not sure of the meaning. And I'm going to continue hitting you because this is what comedians do. Right. You've been masquerading that you're a comedian, too. And that's the fallacy. So and nobody that, in boxing fights out of their weight class. If you're a 130 pounder, you don't just show up with the 160 pounders. You stay in your Unless you're Canelo. weight class. Is that what you wanted to do? No. That she was out of her league when no. it came to because I she, didn't want to do any of it. I know you didn't want, didn't to, want to, do but once she took it there, you f did you feel that you had to go there? Yeah. Oh, you could you could have said, Wanda, I didn't come here for that. I just want to do the interview. I just want to talk about what happened. Oh, you misunderstand my job. My <laughs> my job is to be funny. <laughs> my job is to be funny first. Look how seriously he said that shit. He said, "You forgot my job." To be funny. Remember, he's selling tickets right now. He's also there just going out there just showing love, too. <laughs> my job is to be funny first. My first job is to be funny. My yeah. second job is to be respectful. My third job is to be immaculate and Gaza strip it. Huh? Uh, That's non-political. I'm saying if you do it, you let a terrorist accidentally touch over here. And I won't stop burning you down until there ain't nothing left. It'll literally be rubble on top of rubble and I'll still be bombing. Why? Because that's why you should mind your business. This is what F around and find out is about. Right. Have you ever been booed, Cat? Um, yes. Yeah, I have. What was every comedian bombs, right? Was that feeling like? Did it like want to give up? Because we don't. I mean, because when you have, I mean, I don't know how early it was in your career. Obviously, it hadn't been in the. I don't think it's in the last decade because you've been immaculate. Have you ever dropped a pass? I have. I've been booed too. You know the little <laughs> segment between. Everything is fine and I got it. And then you noticing where it is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that. Um, the thing about as a comedian, the audience's opinion is the only opinion that matters. Not you, the writer, not none of that. And so I don't think any comedian has ever been booed unnecessarily either. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> they, they deserve it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. What, what do they say when a guy shoots the air ball in the NBA? They say air ball right. to make sure everybody knows. But again, he still got to get back on D. Right. Like the game didn't end. He don't get to throw his hands up and sulk. Right. That's supposed to be used as a learning experience. Yeah. Most comedians don't get booed enough. 
I mean, I think not enough humans don't get booed enough when it goes to you know trials and tribulations. You got to think about this, man. Like tough times create strong people. So I know I I hate making this reference and going back and forth, but like you guys see me always arguing and fighting with you two because. I catch them stealing revenue. I catch them doing invalid traffic. I catch them putting bugs in my system. Right now, I can't even monetize my videos. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Like, but I won't stop. You see what I'm saying? Like, I won't stop. I know that I'm in the right. And karma is real. That shit will come around. So mark my words. Today, watching this video with me, there will be a time in my future where I could look back on this and be like, I fucking told you. I told you. Most comedians don't get booed enough. But like, I I need to go through these hardships to shape me into whatever the fuck it is I'm going to become. I'm already a songwriter. I love what I do, but I do love content creating, and I can see myself having a future in it. I don't know exactly where. I would love to do podcasts like this, something similar. Um, but I have to go through these hard times. I don't know why I, I'm the one who fucking. Maybe I offended some fucking person over at YouTube, and ever since then, they put a red flag on my channel. Or they stuck a bunch of red flags in me. I don't know, but I'm supposed to go through this to shape me into whatever the fuck I'm supposed to turn into. And I think that happens for a lot of us. And a lot of us are too worried about being in this comfortable, safe place. And then once we step out, we get hurt and go back. I get hurt, and I keep fucking trucking through the hurt just to see how much shit I could take. And I think that's what helps mold people into stronger, better versions of themselves. You know, um, that's just my belief. and that, That's just how I feel about this entire situation with what's been going on with me. But this is about Cat Williams right now. So, yeah, man, you got to get booed. You got to go through hard times. You got to lose everything. You got to go through breakups. You got to lose people. You got to lose things. You got to lose to win. I mean... This is how you end up with a Michael Blackson who's a real African doing a fake African accent. Okay, move, don't. Uh, this guy is mad at me. All I did was give him the best advice of his life. Remember, he was wearing dirty dashikis. Dashikis. And I told him he needs. Hold on, sorry. Donald said Paul said, or it can break you. No, it's not going to break me. Nothing's going to fucking break me. Only I could break me. Nothing could break me. I could break me. Don't get that twisted. It's all up here. And say fucking something happens with YouTube or whatever social media platform and I can't do it no more, I pivot. I find something else that I go fucking do great at. I'll be fine. Because it's up here. They can take away everything from me, but they can't take this. You see what I'm saying? Nothing's going to break me. You got to have that mentality. It was giving him the best advice of his life. Remember, he was wearing dirty dashikis. Dashikis. And I told him he needed to dress to be in the position that he's trying to say that he's in. And if you're the African king of comedy, sir, there's actually comedians in Africa doing comedy. If you're going to say that, you got to go to Africa and get a school, dude. Everybody got you. You got to put in some work. And these guys, they take my advice. They change their whole persona. And. And then they hate me for it. And generally, I'm just too big to comment or make a statement about it or do a live or any of that. But when it gets to be a whole grouping of these guys, I got to come and talk to Shannon. <laughs> I love that. I got to lay it down at the altar. <laughs> I lay it down at the altar. And uh, Donald, no, I see you. I know you, were, you weren't saying just me. I was trying to speak on behalf of other people, too. That go through hardships. I know what you're saying. It can break people, but that's supposed to happen. You're supposed to be broken, hit rock bottom to rebuild yourself into something stronger. If you let it completely decimate you, you got to work on having a stronger mentality. You know, and Mother Nature has a way of weeding out the weak. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mother Nature knows how to take its course. It will eliminate the weak. So you, you got to be mentally prepared to lose it all. You got to be mentally prepared to fucking get it all back. That's all I'm saying. I want to see everybody do well. Why, why do you think in all my videos I'm supporting every artist? Why do you think every reaction channel that ever hops into my live streams, I say, hey, do me a favor, guys. Go like, go subscribe over there. Even people who don't like me, I say, hey, do me a favor. Go show them love. Because... I have no competition besides myself, no matter how somebody feels about me. 
you have to show love across the board. And I do believe in karma. I, I do believe in that. So hopefully, you know, whatever's happening with everything going on over here, not saying I need to be paid back or anything, but hopefully I learn some lessons that'll teach me something in the future. You know, and I, I hope that happens for everybody who's going through shit right now. We're all going through shit. Be it financial, be it mental, be it relationship, be it whatever the fucking case may be. We're all going through shit right now. They're all things to learn from. That's that's what I take from it. These are all steps of learning for me. <laughs> you know every comedian. This, this is the other side of Kirk Franklin Prince. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reckoning. 2024. The reckoning. You, you watch that. You know every comedian that's been on my show. You know you watched every episode. No, you that's not what you said. You said I know every comedian. You know every comedian. You're sure. limiting me. Oh, you watched every episode because you 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 know things. You know things. I that <laughs> he studies things. <laughs> That's always where I'm trying to come from, whether it's comedic or otherwise. That's why even if you see me get arrested 10 times in a row on TV, as a fan of mine, you can be like, he finna be right out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they just say it. He didn't do it. He couldn't have. It's stupid. Why would he do something stupid knowing he got to come back and talk to us? Nah, they, re they respect that every time it happens, I'm going to be free as a bird sitting out here talking to you about it, that it really was what I said it was. That's all. You end up, you come down, you're in L.A. Yeah. Now, I'm reading. Cat Williams won Cedric the Entertainers and Heiser Bush Best, L Best Los Angeles Comic Award. Did you win that award, won Cat Williams? It's a simple yes or no. It's not a rhetorical question. It's a question that probably should have been asked to Cedric the Entertainer. I'm asking you. I got you here, though. I know. I couldn't <laughs> believe Cedric didn't get asked that question. <laughs> you still a dude's joking to give him an award, and then 10 years later, you don't know nothing about it. <laughs> I like how he's subtly just jabbing. He's just, he's just jabbing uh, Shannon a little bit. Like, just giving him a hard time. Like, you couldn't back me up, motherfucker? Hey, but I but I promise you this. What? If he sees me again before he sees you, he'll be talking different when you see him. <laughs> that's, the, that's the difference. That's what these comics understand, is that I'm not doing nothing for clout. I don't even recognize clout. But eventually, the Lord is going to let me and you be in one hallway. Mm. A lot of these dudes go... Kevin Hart done went 25 years without ever being in the same building with me at the same time. What, so what, if what? I go in the building, he walk out. You've never seen us in the same building ever in 25 years. Like, it's like that. <laughs> Why? Damn. Why? Yes. Because what? I'm really the product. It's not what you think. I am never under the influence of anything. I'm always in my right mind. I'm always a physical specimen. And when you see me, I'm much, much bigger than you had thought. I have far less play in me than you would like. And I'm relentless. I'm out there. I'm still to this day. I play 11 games of basketball with a 20 year old. The record is 92 and six. This is just in the yard, just to the rack, just cause. You work out cat? I mean, no, you work out cat? Uh, not to the gym. You don't work out in the gym? You do push ups, sit ups? I, my whole what? life it was, um, it was just push ups and no, sit ups so. only. I would do like a um, hundred push ups a day. Just. I thought you were gonna say a thousand. No, no, no. <laughs> because this is literally every day. Right. This is not for the, yeah for the gram, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, literally a hundred a day and I would do push-ups, and then I tore both my rotator cuffs. And so it was only thanks to golf that I was even able to get my you a golfer now? back. I, I've been a golfer for quite some time. My short game is impeccable. I, I, I can't get you, but, but two and some change off of the, um, the off the tee, but I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm still coming in for par guaranteed. Mm. You playing for the tips? Uh, He's saying from the blues or the blacks, depending on where you, what the chorus is, but the blacks, the blues is where the 
pros who play from to make the course a lot longer when you say I'm playing from the tips. Uh, no, I've, I've found that you don't get anything for that. <laughs> it seems like, it seems very ego maniacal. They go, hey, Cat, for free, you can go further back. So when you're driving, okay, for people who don't play golf, when you're driving the ball, there's uh, red tees, white tees, blue tees, black tees, or gold tees. Black and gold is typically right where it's at. Sometimes black and black and blue is where the same place at, but from the tips would be like blues or black and gold. It makes the hole longer. So say say you're at the white tees and it's a par four and it's 320 yards. Well, if you go to the black or the blue tees, it'll make it like 345, 350 yards. So your drive has to be longer. He's saying like, I don't hit the ball far as a, with the driver, but my short game. So we're saying like 100 yards in is impeccable. He'll be on there for par. <laughs> hey, what? Wait a minute, does it still count the same? Hey, I'm up at the ladies' tee. Don't tell me my pronouns. <laughs> Which is the, <laughs> the tell me my pronoun? That's the red tee. Count the same? Hey, I'm up at the ladies' tee. Don't tell me my pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> On the golf course, I'm she, her, him, them, and they. <laughs> whoever, whoever the front tee. We're, I know we're joking, we're having a great conversation, but you did win the award. How did the award help your career? <laughs> it had to help some, Cat. Nope. No. Nope. God, come on, Cat. I didn't remember it had happened until you just said it. Se How can Cedric give you an award that was worth something? Everything Cedric and Ricky Smiley ever been in got canceled for not being funny. Ricky sat here and told you that they cut him out of every movie he did. They always had a reason. Right. <laughs> <sighs> that's what that's fucked up to say like hey i've been canceled or cut out of every movie but i'm funny because i'm a happy person i laugh all day long i can't even imagine the misery of these bums <laughs> <laughs> just to not be good at what you do not work hard at what you do but have to act like you're the best at what you do it is crazy it's great. But they be touring, they, they, they be doing like 100 shows a year? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't run into none of them. That's what I'm saying. If you a Phase I Love fan, you mean you've been a fan of him for 32 years, you still waiting on him to do his first special? You mean to tell me if Steve Harvey, your favorite comedian, you mean you've been waiting for him to do stand up for 15 years now? I mean, Steve got a, got a, a lot of other. Hmm, someone to spend something on my credit card? Hold up. Credit card payment due. What? You guys spending my money? Who's spending my money? I didn't buy anything. I'll check this afterwards. What? What do you mean I spent money? What did I buy? I didn't buy shit. Hey, who stole my credit card information? Amazon Marketplace. Oh, let me find out. One of you got me. Let me find out when you got me. What do you mean sign in? What the fuck? I can't see. Damn it. All right. Somebody got me. L DL still out there. None of those irons matter to stand up. Who cares that they wrote a plaque card for you to do Family Feud on? Like, you're... So you're successful because we're surprised you can talk for a living and it's entertaining that you're going to say some funny country things. But not a writer. Right. Not a writer. How did you develop Money Mike and get it? I mean, that, I mean, everybody talk Money Mike. Great character. Is, how, how did you come character. up with that and say, you know what? This is how he should dress. This is how he should talk. This is how he should look. This is the kind of whip he should ride. This is how he should talk. So if you'll remember that that was my first movie, just understand that what I did then, I've done with every single role, whether it was an Emmy winning role or whether it wasn't, whether I was playing somebody homeless, whether I was playing a dirty vagabond on Atlanta, whether it was an eccentric guy in First Sunday. Sorry, I have to stop just really quick. Uh, Corey Reef says, damn, no one remembers the Tiggity Tits days. I believe I sub when Cliff Beats was at 200 to 300 subs. Bro, bro is a loyal motherfucker. I appreciate the hell out of him for that. Oh, yeah. The Tiggity Tits YouTube made me take that out of my fucking intro. They were like, we can't 
they 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 accepted me into their YouTube partner program and they were like, yeah, you can monetize your videos, but you need to change your intro. And I was like, why? And they were like, because it's sexist or something. And I was like, what? And I realized what they were trying to say. They were like, we can't tell you exactly what to say to change your intro, but you need to change your intro. I was like, say less, fuckers. Lana. Thanks for rocking with me, my guy. I appreciate you, Corey. Whether it was an eccentric guy in First Sunday, regardless of what the role is, the first thing I do is erase me from it. Okay. So anything that I would naturally do, mm -hmm. that's what I'm not going to do okay. because I'm playing a different You're character. You're playing a character. Okay. Right. So I then create this person based upon real life circumstances. So I don't have to wonder what a pimp thinks because I've been in that position for a little while. I also worked manual labor for some time in my life, so I don't have a problem paying somebody that works. And I don't have a problem uh, being a go-getter because I'm a go-getter. So I bring whatever I can to these characters. I was able to... Um, the first week that I got the script, there was a, a pimp guy that used to be a pimp, but he wasn't anymore. He was a rapper now, and his name was Mac Minister. And he um, had been a pimp and was going to be a rapper. And I only about to be a preacher. had never done a movie before. I was a stand up and I'm getting ready to do the movie. And so I was able to craft what a real pimp was like, what was too much. I didn't want to be stereotypical. Right. I, I, I did the research. I saw how many times people played pimps and they were always it was always something weird about them, right. I guess, because it's a like a weird stride and shit. Yeah, they always had something weird. Donald said doesn't seem that long ago, or maybe I was watching older vids. You gotta remember, guys, the channel's two years old. The 27th will be my three-year anniversary, so it feels like I've been here for a long time, but in all reality, I started making content in 2021, so yeah, I haven't been here that long. I'm still learning everything. I'm still a, I'm still a fucking baby in the game. I'm still trying to learn this shit. People have been doing this for decades, you know? A weird job, you know what I mean? Right. And I wanted somebody that didn't seem like none of that, that he really thought it was a business and treated it like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, those adding those levels to acting is what all actors do if they're not Steve or Cedric or Ricky. Mm -hmm. Like you're trying to create a character. You don't you can't just be phase on in every movie like you're just <laughs> you gonna take your shirt off on. like every movie like why does it say that in your script man let big worm live let him breathe cat let big, let, let, let big worm breathe let's call him out now <laughs> he said he was relentless <laughs> You having an unnatural allegiance to losers is not like you. No, I ain't got no allegiance to the man. But you got to admit the role that he played, Big War, I mean, Big Perm in Friday Night. You got to give him credit for the role. Now, come on now. Let me ask you a question. Yes. If what you're saying is correct, why wasn't he in next Friday or Friday after next? I mean, his role, I mean. It wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. There was a lot of people that didn't, that appeared in the first one that weren't in the second one. Cat. I'm just telling you why. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it's a there's a news flash that there are reasons for things in a business. Yes. Oh, okay. It wasn't a good character. I mean, the character was okay, but Smokey is what made the character better. You see what I'm saying? It was Chris Tucker who made that whole interaction fucking hilarious. Well, <laughs> what would you? Why would you? Why, why did you bench D-Lo? He had two points. What are you talking about? <laughs> Shut up. But I like him. Nobody cares about that. That's not what we're talking about. These are business conversations that deal with businessmen. Right. Right. When you're good at something, you should progress. The guys that are not as good, they should fall down by the wayside. That's natural. They're where they, so you believe if your talent doesn't support it, you should fall by the wayside, and the guys that have the talent and they get elevated, they should move. No, that's what water says. That's what the universe say. The universe say the levels. <laughs> the heavy, no, I don't. Not I say. Who am I? I'm nobody. I like that but I'm working every day, as if I think that's what should happen.
is how it should be. And I'm choosing comedians that also write and work hard and don't steal other people's material. And I'm making sure that they all make $300,000 a, a, a season. And I'm making sure that they're not ever signed to me or my conglomerate. And that's why they're successful. No, you can work with me and still be an independent businessman, boss owner like you came in. Right. I don't need you to be subservient to me. That's those other guys that make you pay dues. <laughs> you said earlier that you rewrote a lot of what Money Mike was to say and how he behaved. So they allowed you the, 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 the freedom, the liberty to ad lib. How much? Would they allow you to just make an interception if it didn't nobody talk about it? As a football player, if the ball comes your way, can you just grab it? Can you make an interception anytime? Are you allowed to pick up any fumble? Are yeah. you, you can do any hustling, yeah. right? Oh, okay, same here. Same here. But here's like the thing, though. Even as, a, even as an offensive player, yeah. they might let me ad lib once I get a couple of years into my breath. They wouldn't let me ad lib as a rookie. That was your first movie. I, mm. I told you the conversation in my first movie just because I'm, I am committed to laughs. The only way I made it past those 300 comedians, I didn't tell you this. What it required is I had to watch all 300 comedians 10 times a piece. Oh, the 300, okay. These are 300 people that he had to cross off his list. I thought there was 200 uh, that were trying to get that part because 201 auditions. He was 201. Okay. 300, 300 people that he wanted. He had to be better than, be funnier than. I watched your set 10 times of you performing, whoever you were, and then I counted how many laughs you got every time you did these amount of minutes. So if you told me this uh, comedian and told me he did 30 minutes, I could tell you that he got 26 laughs in that 30 minutes because I had done the numbers on everybody. So I didn't just say I was funnier. I knew I was funnier than the comic you liked. And I could tell you how many jokes funnier I was because <laughs> that's how we judge stand up. You do 15 minutes, I do 15 minutes. How do I know I'm funnier than you? Because you got six laughs and I got 16. I'm almost three times better than you, low-key boy boy, but I'm never going to tell you the formula. So you're going to keep just going out there telling jokes. Now I understand it that I, psychologically, the audience by 10 years is convinced that I'm funnier than you. They just don't know why. Because I'm putting out more content, better. The writing. I so it's the obsessive content creation and the writing. That's why people harp on me like, oh, you released too many videos, this, this, and that. And I've listened. I've listened. I, hate, I hate making this analogy. But I started listening where I was like, oh, I only do five videos. I only do three videos. I needed to get back into my element and what I was doing. And I, I got to stop listening to people trying to give me their input. That, that's a big problem that I've, I've been going through. And I got to get back to doing me. Because that's what got me here is doing me. And I stayed away and I started listening to other people. And. I got to get back. I got to do stuff like this. Like, I love doing long videos. I love doing podcasts. I love making fucking 10 videos in a day. I need to get back to doing what I was doing. That's how I do things. I had Terry Crews on here. He said at the time that you did the movie, you were homeless. Is that true? Um, this was my situation. I... Five months prior to me getting this first audition for Friday After Next, I got this baby son. I'm holding him up above me. He grabs my little chain. He's playing with it, and he accidentally drops it. It breaks out my front two teeth. Oh. I'm in a situation now where when I go to the dentist, they're telling me this is going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars to fix this right. They're not telling me what it's going to look like. I go get an estimate with no money involved, find out what I need to do. They find out you got a tumor in your upper jaw, so we're gonna have to do a whole surgery for you. It's gonna be a hundred bands. I don't have it. I don't have it. And oh um, my God. I'm only gonna have this check from this movie. So while I'm doing this movie, we live in this trailer. Um, this is where we live. So when they come to work at five in the morning, we already there. 
when they leave at night, we still there. We just double back um, because we understood that this is our one opportunity. Um, and we have this opportunity to change our lives, just like a young man going for the draft. Right. We can actually get in the league with this. There are 30 comedians on this cast. They're all magnificent. This is the holy grail of the situation. Um, so, yeah, I was able to make sure that because it wasn't just my first movie. It was K.D. Albert's first movie. It was Terry Crews first. Movie. Absolutely. I was the leader of this group, which meant that we did. We didn't do their rehearsals. They did rehearsal. We did our own rehearsals daily to <clears> make <throat> sure that we were at the level of professional actors, which is what made it so egregious. That guy. Saying, I was supposed to, you were supposed to what? Candy did have a good part in the movie, man. The Santa, Santa Claus was funny, man. The dude said the entire time we were filming, I can't play this role. They got a bandana over my nose and my mouth. My family not even gonna know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, tell your story. <laughs> <laughs> He's Ted, uh, Terry Crews also said that you guys had a lot of had a lot of conversation that this was your opportunity and you needed to seize this moment. <sighs> Terry had the benefit of having been in some very high profile situations already and took L's. Mm -hmm. Like he had been in the league. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He 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 had um, done pro wrestling. He had done a lot of things. He had been televised and some things that hadn't worked. Right. And this was just fortuitous for him. And now you know what nobody has ever said in the whole industry in 20 years about, you know, the whole money Mike not getting raped in the bathroom. Right. So I understood going in that there's no reason. I lost every... For a five-year period, every single movie that Kevin Hart did was a movie that had been on my desk that all I had said was just can we take some of this step and fetch it shit out and then I can do it. Like, it don't need to be overtly homosexual because I'm not homosexual, right? It doesn't need that right. to be funny, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and me saying that and them going, oh, yeah, no problem. And then going to give it to this other guy and having him do it just like it was. And acting like I'm a bad person because I keep standing on my standard. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting, but I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, again, I'm, I'm on the win. <laughs> and don't, don't get it twisted. Cat Williams is very wealthy. Hold on. Let me see something. Cat Williams is very wealthy. Cat Williams not worth. Now, whenever you search this, it's not always accurate. You're trying to search my net worth and it's not right. A net worth of $2 million is a 2024. My ass. He's been selling out arenas for over a decade. He's worth a lot more than $2 million. I'll tell you, I know that for a fact. I know that for a fucking fact. Side of these <laughs> decisions. You know, look, I've had Cube. I've talked to Cube. And a lot of people say Cube don't doesn't pay. What's your relationship with Cube and what did that opportunity mean for you? Well, the ungrateful bastards that would say anything about Cube's payment. Oh, hold on. I see someone commenting right now saying he speaks on that. You can't trust the Google or Forbes on this. Dude, You right now, you can go Google what I make. You can go Google what I make from, like, some weird... Oh, I'll find it for you. I don't give a fuck. I'm not afraid of looking at this shit. It's so fucking funny, dude. Hold on. Cliff Beats Net Worth. Cliff Beats net worth earnings of 2024. Monthly, I make $10,000. Daily, I make $330. Yearly, I make $120,586. And it'll give you a breakdown on how much money I make each day. This shit is not accurate at all. This is fucking fake as shit. The net worth of Cliff Beats channel through January 16th, January 2024 is $168,571. My channel was not created on the 13th of December either. My sub count is not 163,000 people. And I have well over 4,000 videos. 
it's all fucking fake star stats. I'm not a fucking star either. I hate shit like this. Sorry. Had to get that off my chest. You shouldn't even talk to them anymore. Like, you don't, you don't go to Goodwill. You don't go to a Goodwill thrift store and go, look at all this cheap-ass shit. Why don't you shut up? Why don't you shut up? You could have went to Hermes. Why you didn't go to Balenciaga? Why you didn't get a vote of the ball main? You want to have that conversation? Right. What you mean, the independent black dude who's filming it partly out of his fucking pocket? What you mean he didn't pay you enough? They weirdos weirdos that felt like they earned the opportunity because they were big no no yeah. i understood that ain't no 200 million dollar movie well i mean how much did you expect you was gonna make well i made enough to get them teeth fixed just like you did yeah so, <laughs> so i <laughs> it was no harm no foul i knew that i was gonna go from there and there was no there was no turning you know, back for cat williams okay. well here's the thing um I wrote it. What I'm saying, I'm saying, if I did it and I did a good job at it, you can thank me. I was involved. Right. I'm not gonna come later on and tell you I never even read the whole script. So how you know what rose? What? What do you mean you never read? The <laughs> like you like. People are lying. These guys' whole job is to present something. Unfortunately, and I'm so just not a presenter. If you ask me a question, I'm just gonna tell you the truth of how it went. Would you be willing to do another Friday? Cube already asked me to write it. I was supposed to have been writing it. That's this is what these guys are mad about. Like <clears throat> we lost some great people before this movie mm -hmm. could come out regardless. Right. And so yes, there desperately needs to be mm -hmm. one. Um, um but um, we miss John Witherspoon in a way that John can't really be quantified, yeah. right. if I'm being honest with you. And um, the Chris Tucker that we got now is Epstein Island Chris Tucker, oh, not Smokey. Oh, no. Oh, no. That now is Epstein Island in a way that can't really be quantified, right. if I'm being honest with you. And um, the Chris Tucker that we got now is Epstein Island Chris Tucker, oh, oh. not Smokey. Chase it. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> He's like, how do I follow that question up? What? What? Chris Tucker was on Epstein Island? Oh, no. Whew. <laughs> if I didn't know no better, I'd tell you he's the greatest. I don't care what to say. <laughs> 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 to be confident and not delusional is a real skill. Mm. Most of these confident people we see is really delusional. Well, you don't think you don't think they asked Chris Tucker to come back in the second in the snack in the second Friday? Smokey, Smokey was all in Smokey. There ain't no Friday without Smokey. We all agree to that. And there's no next Friday without Friday. And there's no Friday after next without nah, Friday. Nah, we talk about the road because you said that they don't. Here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. Chris was allowed to make the decision. At the time that this is happening, Cat Williams is known for smoking weed. Willie Nelson is known for smoking weed. Right. Snoop's known for smoking weed. But none of us is really known except Willie. And I'm saying, Chris Tucker didn't want to be the poster child for smoking weed. He don't right. smoke weed like right. that. Right. He right. in the church. He Michael Jackson's best friend. Christmas. Michael Jackson called him Christmas. You ever met a man that gave you a little nickname like that? No. Mm -mm, me neither. You giving somebody presents? You gifting somebody something? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of presents you putting under that Christmas tree? <laughs> Must be the greatest.
Man, I ain't gonna be able to get nobody back. I ain't gonna be able to get no more queens. <laughs> they all coming. <laughs> no, they ain't. Are you kidding? Nah. Hey, I, I promise you. I done got all the rest of them. I done got, I done got the one. <laughs> He's thinking about his roster. Like, ain't no one coming back on the show. <laughs> Are you kidding? Nah. Hey, I promise you. I done got all the rest of them. I done, I done got the ones. Every, I promise you, everybody trying to double back. You're gonna be having to beat them off with a stick. <laughs> you won't let him. They're coming. <sighs> Much as. <laughs> you're on Def Comedy Jam Comic View what were those experiences like what do you what do you remember most about Def Comedy Jam and Comic View uh, Comic View was everything um, Comic View was really the break um, and not Friday after next just because Comic View was just 3,000 of your stand up peers and we just throw sets of all of them up there and we see who the audience likes who do they like? And um, it was a great wild, wild west time to be involved in comedy. And um, the same is true for Def Jam because uh, hip hop was a fad at one time. Hip hop ain't gonna last. And why are you doing that? Um, and that's how it was for blue comedy. Mm -hmm. um, if you were a comedian that cussed, you were ridiculed by the mainstream comedy mm -hmm. geist that would be like me being on joe rogan joe don't want me on there i need to be on shannon joe joe got six comedians that never been funny he want to push out <laughs> joe rogan actually does want uh cat williams on his podcast he actually i've listened to joe rogan's podcast a few times where he praises cat williams and they've they've watched some of his skits and stuff like that too they all praise cat williams they all do all of his friends all joe rogan they definitely that would be dope to see Cat Williams get on Joe Rogan's podcast because Shannon Shannon kind of seems like a people pleaser when it comes to like asking asking questions and not really trying to I won't say push the limits but really try to like dig deep into these answers. Joe Rogan's the type to actually like have a back and forth and really try to figure out the answers. Not saying he's the best at anything, but there's a reason why he's the number one podcast in the in the, in the world. You know. Um, but he's he's really good. I mean, think about how many years he's been interviewing people, like UFC fighters, after they just knock somebody out or just got knocked out. He's really good at coming up with things off the cuff too, and uh, interviewing people. I mean, that you can't take away from him. You can say he's not a good comic or whatever the case may be, but he's really good at doing uh, interviews. Joe got six comedians that never been funny. He want to push out. <laughs> 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 but that's really how it is. I'm so sorry I'm competitive. You're an athlete, right? You yeah, understand. yeah, I, I can tell. You understand. Will there ever be another comic view, Def Comedy Jam? Can, could, could that, in today, in 24, 25, 26, could we see that again? They've already announced it. It's already going. You didn't know? Mm -mm. Yeah, Kevin Hart purchased it, so he's now doing uh, Comic View. That happened at the same time that they gave DC Young Fly uh, Hollywood Squares. Where? Yeah, because they tell you that there's no gatekeepers, but we keep seeing the same people open the gate. Didn't Kevin open the gate and let Tiffany in? Mm. And he now opening it up for, don't such and such open the gate for, what do you mean ain't no gatekeepers? There's a hundred gates out here. Would you? I, I, everyone I've seen got a keeper. Would you have wanted to do Comic View or Def Comedy Jam? Would you have wanted to be? I, I think we just mentioned I did them both. No, I'm saying he purchased the rights and refranchise it. Nope. They didn't offer it to me anyway. <clears throat> like Comic View did a couple of disservices to comedy as well. Mm -hmm. So there were people like mm -hmm. me that were out there getting two and three standing ovations in one set. And that wasn't good for television. So what they did was they started making everybody get a standing ovation. So they would tell the audience when they get oh. off stage, everybody get up and cheer. And so now the fact that I'm the only one out there going to get standing ovations is now making people think everybody get a standing ovation. Mm. And that's not how comedy is. So right. I, I understood why that couldn't go anymore. Because remember, Ricky Smiley sat right here and told you a story about how he performed with uh, Mike Epps and Cat Williams when he did Comic View and to let him tell it. Mm. He was funnier than both. <laughs> My name Lil Dow.
<laughs> hmm, talking about the special needs. That's ooh, that's good. That's a different kind of clever material. That was a different time, Cat. No, it wasn't. It yeah. was the time I was there. But I'm saying that time, this time, same times. No, but I'm saying just like people that tell you the Egyptians, they not black. Egypt is in Africa, folks. Yeah. As long as Egypt is in Africa, then Egyptians are African. Do you believe you could tell the same jokes today? As when you started out. I mean, Eddie Murphy not telling those jokes. Richard Pryor not being able, wouldn't be able to tell those jokes in 2024 that they told in the 70s and the 80s. So they wouldn't have told them. But that's my point. They're not inferior people. No. If they were in this time, they would be going according to our time. Just like then we were going according to that. Like that's how it is in the world. There are words that we can use for a while. And when we use them for a while until somebody says that ain't a good word. Yeah. We should stop saying that. Correct. But YouTube. <laughs> That don't make people feel good. And we stop saying the word and we move on to another word. You can't say the R word. You can certainly say special needs. Yeah. You can certainly say spectrum. Be slow. You can, you can, you can, there are things that you can say to get your point that don't have to hurt people. Right. But you would know that if what you did was construct the English language for a living, mm -hmm. then you would understand that part. You financed your first stand up. You had 20, it cost you 22. Thousand. You had twenty five to your name. Yep. What? Why did you decide to do that? You 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 believe that much in cat? I believe that much in business. In business, the goal is for you to become independent and be the boss, take the responsibility, and also get the profit. Okay. That's all. How 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 can I be looking for you to put me on if I wouldn't? And if I can't show you what you missed out on, why would you believe me? Now, the fact that I was able to do it 12 times. That's the real thing. The thing, the part that I'm able to do it all across the country. The fact that every time I do a tour or a special, you think well, that's sponsored by somebody. Somebody did a good job. No, no, just. Just the guy they're kicking around. Just the one who might mentally not be all there. He's the one picking the outfits, writing this guy's material, booking the shows, making sure he gets there. He's the one hiring <coughs> other comedians. He's. But hey, I knew that that's the end goal. So if that's the end goal and I'm there when I start, why would I deviate from that? Right. Mm. Remember, I, 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 I I, my goal was to get this far in Hollywood and still have a virgin asshole <laughs> and I never have sucked a penis. That was my only goal. I didn't want to get with a white woman because I was scared. She might have me running down the street like Jonathan Majors. you gonna think I'm a cat. Not because I didn't like white women. I think white women are as great as any other women. But I'm not going to act like I'm not scared of them. I have a reason to be scared. You could be Kang the Conqueror and they could take your rabbit ass down in two weekends. And that's the truth of the matter. So I stayed away from that. And remember, I told you the drug story from when I'm in the park. Yeah. So these are just the things I had all of those when I came in. I already was ready for that. That's what they don't like. I did not know you you're telling me and showing me a side of the business that I didn't know that you guys are man, the competition, the competitiveness. That's all business. I don't care if they're selling Coke. You wouldn't believe the things that Coca-Cola says about Pepsi. Oh, I was thinking about cocaine. I was like, well, yeah, well, they take each other out. But Coke, what the Coca-Cola says about Pepsi. You wouldn't believe the water conversations between Dasani and Liquid Death. Like Liquid in Death. all business, in all sport, competition is a driving force. And I don't require anybody to be better. Who am I? I just require if you're a loser and you've taken shortcuts at every chance and you've made sure that you didn't put anybody on that really had a work ethic and was a God-fearing person and you helped it. If that was never you, then don't act like that's you. Don't get out here now that you don't do stand-up and start acting like, oh, you're not sure why you don't do stand-up no more. I heard you got run off. 
You better be careful the nigga that run you off gonna show up and he gonna tell everybody. Man, what you gonna be able to say? Nothing. Why you think I speak with such clarity? I'm actually involved in each one of these stories I told you about. <laughs> As I mentioned, the details. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> The one comedian that we've been sitting here doing this interview that you hold in very high regard is Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle walked away from 50 million. You said it was more. Tell the story. That's right. I want to no, let you tell I, it. No, you're, you're no the best. I want you to tell it. You really are the best. You're proving it here today. <laughs> as much as I'm proving it, you proving it. You proving it. Um, yeah, that wasn't the thing. It wasn't. People say that he lost $50 million. No, no, that's not even close to what happened to this dude. And until you understand what happened to the dude, you don't understand what happened. Like, no, not they offered him 50 million and he turned it down. Who gonna turn down 50 million? Now I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Uh, Cause he didn't be wanting the body. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you got to tell him no. Look at Shannon Sharp right about to fall out of his couch. He said, I got to protect my virgin hole. Because P. Diddy wants to party. I can make comments on Diddy. Because I, 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 yeah, I, I know Diddy. I have met Diddy. He, he's an interesting dude. Uh, yeah, let's just say I, I'm sober. I don't party. Uh. But the dude is always trying to party. And I don't care what you do. I don't care who you're with or whatever. But yeah, he, 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 he. Uh, I like Cat Williams speak, man. But he, he's a. I. There's a reason why when when I did the Eminem kill shot uh, reaction, I made a comment saying like, look, like that line hits harder than people realize, because. Eminem knows more about Diddy than the average person. I said this in 2021 when I did that reaction. Now here we are in 2024. What's going on with Diddy? What's happening with Diddy? What has 50 Cent been doing all last year with dragging Diddy's name through the mud? Rightfully so. Just pay attention. Diddy be wanting the body. And you got to tell him no. And protect your booty hole. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say them yeah, so I need, freely. Can, can, I need, can I need another one? You, here, get you another Thank one. You, okay. sir. Thank he you. He poured damn near half a glass. Thank you. Come on. Because early on, you was accusing me of being... Can't. Man. Can't. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, but you know, the, the, some of these people... Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Kat, when I come back, I need you. You my young partner. You my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. We're going to do it together. We're going to do some buddy cop shit. I said, Martin, you got my motherfucking word, my nigga. Go do what you got to do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know, we get in that office and this fool pull out Big Mama's house, too. I almost died. And I gotta read this script from all these good white people. Where this nigga want me to get in a dress with him. And I'm literally saying to everybody, why is he in a dress again? You already played the old lady as an FBI agent. We can play anything now. We can be playing a dog catcher this time. Why do we need to be in a dress? And I get so mad, I say, you don't want me. You want Brandon T. Jackson. And that's who they went and got. Twice I said it, they went and got him. Just like I'm telling you, I had that other dude's work. I had all of it. All I did was say, I want to punch it up so it's not offensive to real niggas. And that's how I got in this position. You say that's how I got blackballed. That's how I didn't get those fifty million dollar offers that somebody else took. That was a plant. He's making a call back right now to if you can, didn't catch a Kevin Hart. Lord of mercy. I sure hope I <laughs> say Lord of mercy. That's how I got in this position. Lord of mercy. I sure hope I have a uh, club Shay Shay after this year.
<laughs> it's gonna be in a dimension that's never been. Yeah, it's gonna be. A, it's gonna be it's the greatest thing floating in twenty twenty four. Mark the words. No way. In a in a whole different realm of business. <laughs> Oprah coming next. <laughs> <laughs> Once I establish this as a place of truth. Yeah. Oh yeah. Watch. Watch. God's people ain't that few. Yeah. <laughs> Prince. You met Prince. Prince was a friend of mine. He was a friend of mine. What was those conversations? Because he's, look, I mean, sometimes we don't really re understand or, or appreciate someone until they're gone. I did. I was a big Prince fan. All of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because he could play all the instruments. He could sing. He could dance. He was an entertainer yeah. that could sing. And what he wrote, I mean, who thinks of Cherry Moons? Who thinks it snows in April? Who a Raspberry Beret or a, a, a Pink Cashmere? The thing, the Purple Rain, the things that he wrote about. But like, bro, who, who mind goes there? The writing is connected to something higher than you. I can't explain it. Sometimes when you're in that creative zone, things just kind of, it's like, it's like you have an antenna up and you're just grabbing ideas and thoughts. Yeah, he was... Um, special, very special in touch. He was so. like any, unlike anybody in the world. Um, he, he, he was... Um, he was just an amazing individual. I, I was able to meet him when I was 12 and I knew him um, my entire life through all of his changes. I was able to um, assist him many times. If you go look at Prince's car collection, you'll see that Prince don't have not one car Cat Williams ain't got. He got the Prowler from Friday after next sitting there. He got the same Bentley as me, like, because we share certain things. Our, our connection was lyrics, musical lyrics, um, women, and cars. And that's, those are the areas where he trusted uh, my opinion on things. And um, that's where I got to be helpful in his life. And he was helpful in mine in um, really all different types of ways, especially about the business as far as being a black man that was rich in this business at 18 years old, had already did his first million dollar contract, had already broken records, was determined that he didn't want to be like anybody else, was a, so great of a guitar player that black people just stopped caring about guitar and he got left out on a limb and somehow still had to create his way out of that. He was just really a, a, a one in a billion type person. I was lucky to know him. Now, there are specials and the streaming. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's as many and there's no DVDs now. So where so so where are you on this the streaming, the specials? I mean, obviously you, you still tour, but how much do you focus on, okay, I'm gonna tour, say a hundred days or 150 days, but I'm gonna do a special. Well, now that our relationship with Netflix is at the eight figure mark. Um eight? How how you said eight. Often, how often you want to make them? How you, you said eight. I mean, like, like right, right. five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Got to be ten million to qualify. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, once you're at that level, how I many would you do? I, 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 I'd be willing to bet. You say, Shh. <laughs> every time you turn around, I'm gonna be doing another one. Hey. I think that's what you would say if you was any good. Yeah. And like sure. I said, like I said with twelve comedy specials, why do I need to be in these conversations with these? Specialist people. Sid ain't got no special you remember. Steve ain't got no special you remember. Ricky ain't got no special you remember. Faison ain't got no. What? So why do y'all get a special? Yep, it was twenty minutes long. It was good too, though. It was. He's good. Not it was good. He's yeah, good. Yeah, see, that quite He's my guy. good. Don't think because I said something um, a derogatory that I, I I don't I don't know how to hate. Earthquake has consistently, I don't think anybody's ever said Quake wasn't funny. He he probably never been booed. Yeah, I don't hilarious, think, hilarious. I don't think he's ever given a bad performance. They thank you, my life. dog. But, but, um, off the cuff. But his just due was overdue. 
he was in a whole different situation. Yeah. Because he wasn't able to translate the stand up to the movie, movie thing. TV. He took a hit. Most people don't take a hit. They're just judged on their stand up. Right. So yeah, no. I I I even though it sounds like there's a lot of people I don't that's not the case. I I am a, I'm a proponent of all of us who are in this business working hard trying to make it. When you got into stand up, was crossing over, was doing TV, was doing movie, was that a, was that a part of it? You like, okay, I'm gonna do, I, I'm doing stand up. Okay. Next next the the next progression is TV movies. Throughout, throughout the history of stand up, sir. That's that's the goal for all of us. That's how it goes. That's why when you hear these dudes talking about, oh, I didn't want to be a movie star. You just know it's disingenuous. Like, what are you talking about, dude? Yeah, oh, no, no. I just wanted to do a game show. Right. What? <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure? Because I thought you did Mark Curry's show over after he had just done hanging with Mr. Cooper. Why would you do all of that man's stuff that he did on his show on yours and then do the dude stand up when you go on the road and then you never put Mark Curry on your show or nothing? Like, if you don't say anything, these dudes will run over you. I don't know if you know how bullies operate. I but do. if you don't stand up for yourself, there really is nothing they won't do. Right. You're a very generous man, Kat. Uh, you, you're the sole sponsor of Melba Moore, <laughs> getting a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You, you did all that on your own. Why? What, do you have a personal relationship with Melba? No, no. I, um, I, I understood that she was a black woman in a time where it mattered what you look like and they had a certain thing that they needed you to look like and act like in order to be successful. Right. And she just never did that. She wasn't tall enough. She wasn't fine. Uh, they didn't like her looks. They didn't like that her hair was natural. They talked crazy about her and yet she still made all of these achievements and I'm like, understand, I'm already in the Comedy Hall of Fame. I'm already going to heaven no matter what happens. If it ends in a second, I'm up there. So it gives me the leeway to do some things that are simply because it's the right thing to do. So the truth of the matter is they wanted to give me a star, but please don't consider me and this, this person been sitting on this list this whole time. And just because they ain't got enough money, they can't get they just do. That's crazy. When do you start? That That's hurtful. What if somebody can't afford their flowers? You mean they don't get them? No, God mm. don't operate like that. He would send a dummy like me to come and take care of that. Just so that the right thing happens. That's how the universe works. Because remember. Saying I was God sent. Hold on. I got I got to use the restroom, guys. Give me one second. We're, we're, we're getting close to the end of this. Day. I guess maybe not. We got 50 minutes left. Hold on. I got to use the restroom. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Everyone doing good? Everyone got their drinks, their popcorn, their food. Everyone chilling. Robin Williams is one of the few. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't uh, had a chance to, to jump into Robin Williams' uh, stuff, but I definitely will. I definitely will. Let's uh, let's finish this up, though. Remember, I was, what am I spending my money on? I'm not spending my money on strippers. I ain't spending them on drugs. Why not? Like stripper what? Box. Because if I go in a <laughs> if I go in a strip club, I'm only trying to get her out of there. Yeah. I have no intention of her or any other people being in this position. If I see a girl I like at the strip club, I'm telling her, you know you don't have to strip no more after this. <laughs> this could be your last day. Did it? How about that? Ooh. What would it be like just to leave it all? You ain't got to be a hoe no more. I don't even want you to go get your purse. Just leave it. Ain't nothing we get new ID. We get new ID and credit card and social security card. We don't need none of that. That, 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 that. Well, none of that. You gonna, this life don't look good on you. Yeah, shit. You don't even look like a drug <laughs> got, addict. Got me thinking. Got me thinking, <laughs> cat. Right. You hear these athletes talking about, yeah, we was out there tricking. The, what? Why? You're part of the problem. You're part of the problem. Stop paying people that you don't have no respect for. It sets it up bad for us. We got women out here can't find a man because they acting like him. Mm. You are alpha. Now the alphas all want these subservient husbands. You can't have one. No. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. Mm -mm. Sorry about that. Okay, go ahead. Boy, you done got me canceled. How many times in this program? <laughs> Where's the camera? I didn't write nothing. I said tonight. It's all been on these cue cards, and I'm just gonna keep reading them. <laughs> Ask your next question. Uh, hmm. The Migos. Do you help them get out of financial situation? He <laughs> said, "Why you gotta bring that up?" I don't think we ever, as a nation, can remember a time that the Migos were financially unsuccessful. So for the record, I would assume that they've never needed Cat Williams' financial assistance for anything. I'm sure that between QC, the label, and other things, they were taken care of. On the other hand, if I was given the opportunity to help them, would I? Of course I would. That's what I do. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm a pro-black non-racist. Like... I really, really love black people, but I don't love them more than other people. I love everybody. Yeah. I just, I'm a black guy and I, 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 I try to stick with that. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not one of those uh, pillow talkers either. Like when I do something good, mm -hmm. I'm really not doing it for the gram. It's not, it's not for, it's not for any of that. I'm just doing it because it's good to do. I appreciate it. So he's even saying right there, like, so even if I did do it, I ain't going to sit here and talk about it. Like it's, it's not anybody's business. I read, I don't know if this is true, but I did read that comedians on your show say that women sometimes would bring them money and not say where it came from. Say that again. Comedians would say women would bring them money and not say where it came from. Uh, right. So um, I'm not a feminist like um, a feminist would be, mm -hmm. but I do believe that there are no there that in my camp, like if I had 35 people in my camp. Right. right. I believe that other than four jobs, I believe that a woman is better at any of them jobs than any man could be. Okay. So 10 of these jobs, no man can work because I'd rather a female be there. If I gotta smell anybody's breath, I want it to be hers. <laughs> I don't want none of you crusty. Like I, so, so what I'm saying is it, it, in a staffing issue, I'm gonna have 75% women just cause I prefer them. Right. I, I don't prefer to hear two guys talking in the corner. I prefer to hear two ladies talking in the corner. I don't care what they're talking about. I just prefer that. So a lot of times I will utilize ladies to convey a message. If a comedian is doing a great job um, somewhere in the country, he, he just did a masterful set and nobody's going to pay him. They just clapping. And I know he's broke as shit back there. Wouldn't it be nice if somebody just showed up and gave him a little blessing? 
and he didn't have to suck me off for it. And thanks, cat. And just, boy, I really needed it. Why would you do that? If you was actually just trying to help people, you would. People know that's how I pay my tithes. If I got paid $100,000 to be at your city, I'm going to take 10000 of that and put it in your homeless area. Not because I got to. Because you gave me a hundred racks to come to your little rinky-dink town. Who would I be to not pay my tithes back to your town? That's how I got in this position. Wow. You adopted seven kids. <clears throat> Why? Seven. That's a lot of kids for a man that's as busy as you are, travels as much as you do, on the road as much as you are, spend a lot of time because you have to spend a lot. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, maybe it comes just so comes so natural to you to put pen to paper and to write things down and be able to go out there and perform a set. But that's a lot of responsibility, Kat. Right. Right. But if there was a God, what would he think about you if you did that? I'm saying let's just let's say, for example, okay. that God is real. Yes. OK. And let's say he be looking at what you do. Yes. What would he say if you did that? He said that cat. That's that's a very that's a very kind gesture. That's very generous no. of you. My whole life. Since I was telling you when I was young and they was asking me what I wanted to be and nothing I wanted to be was what I wanted to be God's friend. That's a weird thing if you are atheist. If you are atheist, I didn't even say nothing. But if you believe in God and I tell you that I wanted to be God's friend and I wanted to even go to Hollywood and still be God's friend. If I told you that that was my aim, you could understand where I'm at. Like, <laughs> I, I promise you, I, no jealousy, no bitterness, no, none of that. I got exactly what I was trying to get. I haven't been shorted in any way. I mean, seven, eight kids, single. You gonna get married? You, you remember the conversation where I was where it was me yes and i didn't know what was gonna happen to my two little brothers and yes. they was just gonna be out there yes so when it gone full circle and i'm one of the position. i'm one of the richest men that ever lived and i don't i don't i don't mean please don't look at my net worth i saw my net worth i I had that on me. <laughs> I don't, I don't I mean, I swear to God. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, <laughs> he said, I had that on me. I'm saying, my net worth is less than my last Netflix deal. <laughs> you understand what I'm telling you? Make it make sense. <laughs> but I'm fine. Jesus was poor. Jesus ain't had nothing. So why don't we be mad? You say I don't have nothing. They ain't had the amenities they have back then, okay? Say it again? We got different amenities now. No, not more than gold. Gold was the amenity of that time. Mm. We still got gold. <laughs> gold still run it. They have no Rolls Royce. They got a, you, you can buy, you can buy a, a ass. That's what they call it in, in the Bible. Good look at that. They were cheap. <laughs> I'm saying if you really want to say I'm saying a color nan is cheap so back in the day I would get my girl a donkey today we get her a color nan but I'm saying wh whoever I'm saying whoever and whatever it is I'm saying we <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, I'm saying because what we gonna do I done already told you I'm one of the richest people that ever lived yes. only in the fact that when I wake up in the morning no matter where I am I don't need nothing Whatever I need is right around me, and whatever I don't have, it's <laughs> only just because I don't have it. It's not because I can't get it. All I got to do is want it, and it belongs to me. So because of that, because I'm favored by God, like when I see people's wives and stuff, I don't even look at them. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't want to look at nothing I don't want to have because I, I know how blessed I am. If I look at it, I got it. <laughs> That's how Diddy be feeling. Now, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not supposed to look at anything that you don't want. Not me personally, just because God has given me literally everything I ever even pump faked like I want. 
And uh, that's the whole Ooh. thing. That's that's the whole thing is I don't I don't have a type of woman. Every woman that I ever had as a type, I ended up getting her. Now she's not the type anymore. Now I understand that every woman is a one of one. Like you can't really have types. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, Shannon bit his lip over there. I like this. So he's basically saying, like, I'm the richest man, but he's he means what he means by that is like his gratitude, his appreciation. He has no demons. He has nothing holding him down. So when he wakes up in the morning, there's nothing in control of him. Like he's in control of himself, and he gives all of his glory to God. So he's saying, like, at the end of the day, like I'm rich because I know I'm, I'm happy, and happiness and health is the most important thing in this world. Doesn't matter if you have a hundred billion dollars or fucking a hundred dollars in your bank account. It depends on how you look at it and how happy you truly are. What? Cause see, I tried to ask me something about marriage, but then I, I ain't said nothing about no marriage. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you when did. You, wanted to take me, you you let it out. You was like, so you ever gonna get married? And then you took it back. It's okay. It's okay. I, are you? I, I was known as a photographic are memory. Are you? <laughs> I'm not against it. Like most people that are not married is because they're afraid of commitment. It's right. not that like that for me. It's just <clears throat> the whole time I wanted to be married, I I had kids, so I had to try to fill my wife's place before she got there. Right. So I'm already got kids without a mother, but so now I, I got to be doing laundry. I'm I'm washing dishes. I'm reading stories. Right, I mean, I'm having to nurture. I'm having to do all of this, and I got to the point where I didn't need the wife. I'm doing it, and we're doing it, and I'm not replacing a woman in their lives i'm letting them see that that's just the only thing that we don't have and um it was easier for me to do that because you have to understand that all of the kids i'm raising at this point mm -hmm. they have fathers you see they have a mother you see i'm a different person i'm raising you and so that needs to be done with the other respect for the others that put work mm. in as well. So yeah, um, I, I never had a problem getting married. I, <clears throat> What's one of the one things you try to teach your kids? I don't teach anybody anything that's over 18. I've done the work I was gonna do, but as kids, I really just tried to teach um, the things that can't be bought, um, your integrity, um, trying to live your life in a way that you yourself could be proud of if you had to look back on it. And um, um, I didn't do very good at leading by example, but behind the scenes, I was, that, that's never what I was pushing. Um, um, they understood that <clears throat> because of my stance, there was a certain thing that would come my way. Mm -hmm. And so accountability and responsibility is part of what you're teaching. Is right. that, you know, even if you're doing the greatest thing in the world, there's this thing called no good deed goes unpunished. Like there's a real Murphy's Law. Like mm -hmm. basically in raising kids, you're just trying to give them a better manual and an outline of how life works than your parents gave you. You know, right. and so um, that's how I did it. How do you avoid toxic women? <laughs> hey, give me, give me, give me. I mean, so I mean, because obviously, you know, you like women. I do, and I probably like toxic ones more than God anybody. Dang. That's because <laughs> <I ask> you <laughs> hold on, because toxic women are exciting, and that's just a fact. Part of toxicity Go is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather skydive with her. Uh, but, but, but if you have toxic women, just understand that all monsters are feeding off of something. And if you find out what th this toxic woman is feeding off of, you can just begin to turn off her feeding points. And it drives a toxic person crazy and they'll get away from you. So whatever, if, if she's truly toxic, there are certain things that she's doing that help fuel her toxicity. You're not noticing it, but it's what it is. Why do you think she watches murder mysteries before she goes to sleep? Why is it always a crime drama playing? <laughs> and turn it off. Turn it to cartoons. <laughs> the cartoons. 
<laughs> no, no, you don't get to. What's she listening to? You gonna be listening to Sexy Red? You broke. No, <laughs> Chelsea. Uh, Cat's not saying all women are toxic at all. He's just saying that's what he's attracted to. <laughs> <laughs> Toxic people are trying to get things. They're not being toxic for no reason. They're gaining something out of how they operate. That's why they operate like that, because they get something. As soon as you find that out, you'll be able to cut off what they're getting, and they will leave. Yeah. Yeah. You were married once. Never. You weren't married? Never in life. So would you have a cohabitation agreement? Never. Cohabitation? Oh. How can I be a single parent and be married? You, could, to, and, you know, there are people that like were married and then they get divorced and then they become single parents. That's how that works. Yeah, but a person who's never been married means okay. he's never been married. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm gonna take your word for it. Why would you need to take my word for it? Hold on, hold on. If I had been married, wouldn't it somebody have said who she was? No, it might have been a long time ago. No. Nope. I've never not been famous, sir. I've just, I just, I just worked the story out to you. That, I don't have no hidden mysteries in my life. That was Jesus. I don't have no periods in my life where it's unaccounted for. No, no, no. That person that said that was a liar. I got a case right now in L.A. This lady said she was my assistant for 14 years and I heard her or something like that. I, never worked for me not a day in my life. Liars lie because they want to. But people always say, why would they lie? No, there are several women have said they was married to me. It's just when it went to court, they had to say, I was married to him spiritually. <laughs> you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> How you gonna be married to me? My kids don't know you. Mm -hmm. Answer me that. So do you have a problem? Do you have a problem bringing women around your kids? No, not then or now. <laughs> I've always lived with several women. Like I'm known for Several? That. Yeah. Like more than one? I've already told you that I prefer the company of women to yeah. the company of men. So if I told you that me and a couple dudes on my staff sometimes have to cohabitate, nobody finds a problem with that. Yeah, so it's me and three ladies cohabitating because that's how the business gets done. Like, I don't want a chef that scratches his nuts before he cooks. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> like, I, no disrespect to these guys that go around with these large male-only groupings, but that's not my episode of Entourage. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you were approached. You were approached by seven gunmen. You were robbed, shot in the thigh. Say so it again. You were robbed once, correct? No, I never been. You robbed. didn't get robbed. You didn't. You didn't get approached by gunmen. Tried to get robbed. They didn't take anything. I wasn't even the. I wasn't even um, the target. I wasn't even who they were talking to, and, and not because I say that. Because if you look at what time period it is, I'm not even making five thousand a year. So robbing me wasn't the answer. Now, <laughs> <laughs> this is before Oklahoma. If you <laughs> you talking about a terrible condition? They'd have been disappointed thinking they get something off of you, huh? If they'd have robbed you, look, I. In three cities, there it's legendary that Cat Williams would walk down our streets with his baby in a baby stroller, with a diaper bag, with a gun in a diaper bag. The only thing I need is a pass. Don't mess with me and just let me go about my business. I, I'm living in Inglewood, Compton. I'm living in Manchester and Western. I'm in L.A., the gang capital of the world, but never robbed. Because why? I'm not pretending to be something I'm not. Mm -hmm. You think I'm a blood. You think I'm a crip. I'm from Ohio. I'm a comedian. I'm a father. Right. I'm trying to do something out here. And not only do I not judge what you're doing, I'm not trying to be involved. Right. That's the difference. That's where the respect comes from. To you touring right now, Dark Matters, the Dark Matter tour. Yeah. Filming next uh, uh, Netflix special. In May. May. Yep. Next Netflix yeah. special. And, oh, you two theater in Inglewood. I'm about to catch that. Mm. 
I thought you might say that. I'm gonna catch that one. Right, because it's a homecoming for me. Because I lived on, um, I lived on Hazel, so you know. So I got to catch people that. People know I lived in the heart of Inglewood. They saw me walk down Market Street with the babies I'm raising. Like they understood that. No, no, no. I was really not pretend. Oh, he want to be from the hood. No, I'm living there on the street. What's your favorite city to tour in? <laughs> the next one, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the real beauty of travel. Right. That's why most people don't have the empathy and the sympathy that they need to have for other people. Mm -hmm. It's because they haven't seen other people. Right. Like if you went to Ireland and you saw what them people was like, and you went to Sweden and saw what them people was like, if you really went to Africa and you really saw what the people was like, you went to Haiti, you went to Puerto Rico, if you really traveled across the country, you would see that all people is the same. It's way more people that's good than the fucked up individuals you see. And if you understood that, it would change everything. So I don't I, I, I don't have any favorites in the world just because every place is dealing with their own issues, their own troubles. All places look better than they actually are for the people that live there. Mm -hmm. And it's always a difference between what it seems like and what it, actually and is. What it is like. People will tell you. Oh, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I got I to gotta, I gotta say something. Independent Unity React says, I respect Cab, but at the end of the day, this is marketing for a new special, isn't it? No. How many other podcasts you've seen him get on to market something? This entire, for the last two hours and 13 minutes, we haven't mentioned one thing about touring until Shannon brought it up right now. I think Cat came on here to set the record straight because Shannon had people on here that were lying about him and kind of speaking poorly about Cat. So he came on here to rectify the situation cat williams has been selling out arenas like i said for over a decade without doing really any marketing he might go on a radio show or something like that to show love to the city and like he said for anything he'd get paid he would give back so he'd also go on to these shows just to give back and show love so cat williams has always been able to sell out arenas without doing marketing you know what i'm saying that's just how big his name is but, I mean, of course, it doesn't hurt to get your name out there, but I'm sure Cat Williams' intentions were not to come out here to market his show. That was Shannon trying to show love to Cat right here, but he really doesn't need that, to be honest. I went to Paris. I was there at the Eiffel Tower. Bitch, you had bed bugs. <laughs> and there were rats everywhere. Yeah. The food was terrible. Yeah. Tell the rest of it. Yeah. Don't tell some. Let me yeah. ask you a question. When you, go, when you go to these cities to tour, do you make it a habit of getting out? That's how I built my reputation. It's also how I ended up in jail 19 times. <laughs> uh, because when I come to do a show, I'm really in your city. So whatever the strip club is, I'm there. Whatever the top bar is, I was there drinking. Whatever the... I was at it. You had a casino? I was at it. Like, what was it? Huh? Because I'm in your city. Right. I'm a, this is how I'm learning your city so that when I do my show, I can be talking about what I know, not what I think. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that was what I did at every city that I went to. The first 15 minutes of my show is what it's like to be here. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so that was always a part of what kept my legend going to the point where I can still be in these arenas without you ever seeing a poster with my picture on it, without you ever seeing a flyer, without you ever seeing a post that goes, hey, it's Kat, could y'all make sure y'all come out and come see me? Cause I'm gonna be in, <laughs> would you please? My learning your city, so. Repeat it again. And when I do my show, I can be talking about what I know, not what I think, mm -hmm. right? And so that was what I did at every city that I went to. The first 15 minutes of my show is what it's like to be here. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And so that was always a part of what kept my legend going to the point where I can still be in these arenas without you ever seeing a poster with my picture on it, without you ever seeing a flyer, without you ever seeing a post that goes, hey, it's Kat, could y'all make sure y'all come out and come see me? Because I'm going to be in. Don't do that. Would you please come on <laughs> out, guys? And I really am. Because we have a different respect. I know I'm coming. They know I'm coming. 
I know they going to be there. And they know I'm going to do the best job I can possibly do. And they know beyond a shadow of a doubt, whatever hour he was doing when we last saw him, he won't be doing that hour when we see him this time. That's it's so. a whole new conversation. And because I've never strayed from that, they've never strayed from their part. That's I'm so. looking at some of the the, uh, the the actors that you've been on screen with. Cube, Tracy Morgan, Regina Hall, Terrence Howard. Days I love Nick Cannon. I mean Tiffany. I mean, bro, who who brings out the best in Cat Williams? How do, how does someone get the best out of Cat Williams? Do you need a comedian? Do you need a serious actor? How do we get the absolute best out of Cat Williams on screen? Well, I would be disingenuous if I didn't remind us that that's never anybody's goal. It's never anybody's goal to create a great situation for me to do a good job Why? In, in a script. The way it works is the script is already there. This is a character in the script. If they give me the job, I make it my job that this character here, this character here has to be as big as this whole project. So if you don't even see the movie School Dance, I want you to remember Whose goddamn white baby is this? <laughs> and the only way that I can guarantee that you will remember my scene if you didn't remember a whole movie is if I make sure that my scenes are that good because that's what I watched. I watched great actors. You never saw De Niro. You never saw Pesci. You never saw any of these dudes in something. And you was like, nah, I don't really believe it. You sure you're the great Gatsby? Like, no. <laughs> like, you believe that this dude, Daniel, is a hobbit. That's part of the Lord of the Rings. Right. You see what I'm saying? I and do. so I, it's a, having a respect for the craft that I'm doing that means I got trying to do the best job possible. What was it like working with Spike Lee doing Priceless? Uh, Spike Lee is everything that you said I was in my intro. He's just really Genius. an innovator and a groundbreaking, one of a kind dynamo. And um, and I knew that they were like they tried to sabotage me even then. Like as soon as I said I wanted to get Spike Lee to direct it because that was the biggest thing I could do, they immediately gave. Spike to Gerard Carmichael and had him do his special too at the comedy store and just to undermine like, but I, I <clears throat> if there's one thing you can take away from me as a person, whether you like me or you don't, if you take this from me, you will be a better person. If you decide today that you're going to live every day like it's your last for real, which means have a conversation with yourself every night that, okay, that was it. May not be no more after that. And really count yourself every day like this could have been it. All right. Before I go to bed, this could be it. All right. How's that looking? If you can do that, it'll change your life. You'll really start making decisions and living your life like this. All you got just this one day. But you could be a winner. You could be a winner on this day. It just... It's just work ethic and not the work ethic they talk about. They tell you work ethic where they do all these movies. I'm the hardest working man. Well, no, everybody goes to work every day. But right. Yeah. I'm saying I go to work all the time. Everybody who works goes to work every day. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. You get what? You think I respect you more than my gardener? I don't. Was that a shot at the rock saying I'm the hardest working man in the room? Shut up. You get what? You think I respect you more than my gardener? I don't. I don't. He work every day. Rain or shine. I don't know if you saw this, but Taraji P. Henson got extremely emotional the other day. She was giving an interview. Yes. And <laughs> saying that they're vastly underpaid and say the math is not mathing. They get X amount of dollars by the time Uncle Sam get his cut, by the time the agency get their cut. And what you see they were supposed to get is a fraction of that. Where, where, where do you come down on that, cat? Like it was the saddest thing ever because imagine 
Imagine being in your genre, in your sub niche, whatever it is. Imagine being in your lane. Imagine being one of the very top of your lane that to the point where if they don't take you for the role, there's not three black actresses that they can say are bigger than you that we're going to give this to. Imagine you being at that point and have to humble yourself and say, they're not paying me, y'all fucked up and that's why i keep on telling everybody that's in music and stuff stay independent it's not even worth it cats right right here with when it comes to being paid properly and it's happening more and more now corporate greed is getting worse and worse as i just told you guys youtube is basically stolen everything from me i'm doing this shit for free at this point i'll tell you more about it in the future because i can't talk about it i signed a contract but i'm trying to have a team help me work on some shit um but they took everything from me. This entire channel is fucked. I can't even monetize my video. My shit's all fucked up. Just every company right now is just stealing from everybody. And they not making my pay go up because I'm doing better or nothing. It don't matter to them that I'm famous and people know me or nothing. They want to pay me exactly what they paying the new girl. Yep. And I've been suffering under it for a, de a decade now and just taking it. I just been getting whooped. But I just gotta come say, this is wrong. <gasps> uh, we should be shamed. But this is a country where we don't pay the teachers <clears throat> and then we say the kids is the most important thing. You can't have both of them. If you do that, we're gonna end up with a generation that can't read. Guess what? Generation Z and A can't read. Why? Because who was giving them a book? We got an iPad or a phone, and now the letters don't mean the, there's no cursive writing. Right. Sorry about that. So, yeah, it, this is what period of time it's in. It's uh, the period where the victims get to say, <clears throat> they've been hurting me for a long time. And I just ain't said nothing because I was trying to be strong, and I didn't want to shame anybody. Mm. When our people call out for help, we got to understand. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like we, we, we put too much pressure on Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He ain't put nobody on. The people that been in his productions, they not famous. All of them can walk through the mall without security. Be what you're going to be, but put your people on. If you a gay person and you in there, put some other gay people on. Put somebody on. Or don't be wondering why people keep saying gatekeepers. Because clearly, y'all are keeping these gates. Mm -hmm. Clearly. Mm -hmm. Wilding out. How difficult was it for Nick Cannon to get you on, and what what was that what was that experience like? I've known Nick Cannon since he was a teenager. He had to have his he, he in the comedy club. If you're underage, you can't be in the regular club. You had to be in the kitchen. Right. So I was the master of the kitchen every comedy place because I got a child, and my child is back here in this place while I go on stage. Right. So I've known Nick Cannon since he was 14. Nick Cannon has never called and asked me to do one single thing, and I turned him down because I've known him since he was a young black child in Hollywood. Wow. So um, what I did in Wild and Out was to be his protector and to be his voice um, with hip hop. So the whole thing was the thing that he was trying to do had never been done before. You can't bring six comics in and let six comics talk shit about six rappers because the six rappers will beat the six comics ass. Right. You would have to have a comic that could actually stand in between and go, look, we comics, we going to say what we going to say. Y'all going to take it and understand it's a joke. If you want to fight, we fight before the show. So you can go out there with your black eye. <laughs> We're not going to do it comedically. This is what needed to take place right. in order to be, for it to be successful, which is why it had already aired and didn't work. And then suddenly when it comes back with me, it suddenly works. Because respect has to be in there as well. If you're trying to do it with Kevin Hart, you and him going to get run over. You, you, you a teenager, he fine too. Like, what's gonna happen? Who are some of your favorite young comedians? I don't, I haven't seen a young comedian I don't like. 
I if like you name that. any of the young comedians, I'm aware of all of them and they're all doing a great job. It doesn't matter if it's Country Wayne or Desi Banks. It doesn't matter if it's Carlos or Chico. It doesn't matter if it's uh, DC or just hilarious. It, do it really doesn't it really doesn't matter once we go to the young part. Um, the you know what else I noticed too? Sorry to cut this off, but when Cat was like dissing people, he was dissing them for some of their characteristics and some of their traits and some of their decisions they made. He also said like he doesn't really hate anybody. He has nothing but love in his heart and he's happy. So even though he like takes digs at people, it doesn't mean he necessarily hates them, but he's calling them out on their bullshit. So like there's like layers of love, but also like disdain for some of the, the things they said and the way they treated Cat, which is, you know, just shows you how intellectual he is and how in touch he is with everything. Uh, Zerg Otter said, I thought they fixed your shit a couple months ago. Fuck, dude, YouTube. They made false promises and they, they fucked me over worse than the shit ever was. After August, they completely fucked my entire channel over. It, it's been bad, but I, I'm not going to sit here and talk about it right now. I'll, I'll make a video about it separately, but I'm, I'm just used to it. Again, I said it earlier, it's just, just going to shape me into who I'm supposed to be. So the Young comedians are dealing with things that we never dealt with. And so that gives them more benefits, but it also gives them uh, more chances of failure. So it's not easier for them. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a big supporter of um, Young Comics. We, we have uh, Miss Pretty Ricky and Takara Williams. Um, I've taken 25 uh, black women on the road in these tours. Um, it's important to me that the young comic uh, gets the benefits and the advantages of the big comics platform. Right. Matt Reif, Wildin' Out, recently got canceled. You see Jonathan Majors, what he went through, Marvel dropped him as soon as the guilty, uh, uh, the conviction came out. And you were telling the Hey, you saw that black woman come get his charge cut in half? Thank you, Megan Good. God bless you coming to save that slave. <laughs> if he'd had to be there by himself, he was getting awful. Guilty, 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 guilty. She came in there, it was just so beautiful. They had to knock half of it off. <laughs> bless his heart. So, Matt Wright, you know, you know him from uh, Wild and Out. He gets canceled for a time. Trying to tell I, a. I never knew him from Wild and Out, to be honest. Okay. I, I, I came across him as a new comic. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm really just trying to see the comics, judge where they are, see it. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. So, the, the canceling, uh, the, what, what, what do you think about this cancel culture? You see the situation with Jonathan Major. I mean, for all sense and purposes, I, I don't know, if maybe he can bounce back in, in a couple of years, but, man, he was, he was hot. He was hot. As, he was cooking. I mean, you see him in Creed, he's in the Marvel movies, and then... Just like that. Maybe I'm a conspiracy theory, but I thought Cal Williams said any time they make you into that position, part of that contract is you do understand whenever we want to take you down, we can, right? Part of giving you the world. First of all, they went around the world for two years straight telling any women that would listen that this was a good looking Negro. Mm hmm. Since when? When did y'all start liking a big nose? And <laughs> when did y'all like a little head and a big jaw? When? Since when? That look like my daddy. When you start liking my daddy? You like black people's features like that? If this ugly nigga is good looking, <laughs> then all niggas is good looking. <laughs> Anytime you see them telling you something you can't believe, just understand it's a play. And it don't matter. You gonna know it's a play as soon as they get in that position and think they gonna tell somebody something. No, you're not. No, you're not. Marvel will cancel you so f You won't be allowed to read a comic book. <laughs> what is she talking about? <laughs> ah, get out of here. Get out of here, <laughs> ugly boy. Uh, yeah, they love fooling the people. <laughs> What's your relationship like with Suge Knight? You still close with Suge? Have you spoken to him? Have you talked to him recently? Yeah, he's doing good. Um... Yeah, he's uh Man, when you a friend, you a friend for life with with Cat William. 
Yeah, because the people that come to me are trying to better their life. They're not trying to continue doing what they have been doing. Okay. So when somebody comes to me, male or female, it is in the auspices that this is what I did. This is what I used to do. This ain't what I want to do no more. And I want to do something else. Okay. And I'd like it to go a different way. Okay. That's, I, that's what I offer. Yeah. So um, if you come to me under those auspices, then my loyalty is lifelong. Why would it not be? <clears throat> Tory Lane and Meg. What, what would you take on that? Because I know you, you got to take on everything. I know it's, you a, probably... it's a difficult position because somebody's not going to tell the truth. And the truth has got to be told. In all circumstances, the truth has got to be told. So if you don't want to say she shot her, then you shot her. And that's the end of that. Wow. You said you've never, have you ever spent time in jail? 30 times. <laughs> when, you, when you was in there, what was going through your mind, Kat? What did, what did, I mean, some people like, man, I had an opportunity to reflect and I was like, man, this ain't the place for me. I ain't coming back here. When you, in, so, so what? I've never, I've never been in jail and it was my decision to be there. If, if if it's dangerous to be in the hood and you have to have a gun on you for protection and it's either be judged by six or I mean, judged by 12 or carried by six, I'm always going to have my heater on me. So if you want to tell me that you're going to pull me over 15 times looking for it, I'm going to tell you 15 times you're going to find it. Unfortunately, I smoke cigarettes and weed. If you catch me 15 times, 15 times I'm going to have it on me. What do you think I'm in jail thinking? Oh, I don't fuck up. <laughs> Damn these decisions. I'm not going to protect my life at all when I get out of here. Fuck it. Let them do what they want to do to me. No, no. I, when I'm in there, I'm fine. And I'm understanding that I'm put here for a reason. And the people that get joy off me being in here are really going to look stupid because I'm finna be free. Because you got to be setting this up. I'm never anywhere to get anything. You don't know I just made $300,000 in your city. That's why you think I might be out here as a ne'er-do-well. You think I'm, he's smoking weed. Yeah, he's got a medical license for it. He needs it. It's his only medication. Do you mind if he takes it? It helps him eat. Because he does 19 100 city tours flying across the line. And so he doesn't get hungry on the regular. He doesn't get sleepy at night. He's got to literally put himself to sleep. He's literally got to make himself eat. So this marijuana helps him do both of those things. Marijuana well, help you sleep? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember, remember, as a comedian, what you're doing is against your natural timeline. Yeah. Your natural timeline wouldn't be that you would start your work day at eight o'clock p.m. Right. And then your work day is over at two thirty a.m. Like that's a weird. Yes. Right. So to tell your body now that we're pumped up on endorphins. Now let's go to sleep at three. It don't work like that. Your body has to try to get a whole new schedule. So, you know, it suffered, but that's what worked for me. I consistently used it. I told people all across the country, don't worry, this will be legal in our country. As soon as they find out how to charge taxes for it, we will be legal in this country. Do they view me as some sort of visionary for my forward thing? No, nope. no. Nope. You own drugs. <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> Yeah, but how have you been? I mean, bro, every time they try to put you down, they try to put you to the back. Yeah. You put you bounce up, you move right back to the front. Damn, you I mean, you like a Super Bowl. You just keep bouncing and you bounce <laughs> higher. Trampoline skin is something that you ask God for. Mm. When I watched you play football, you had it. Hmm? There's some people that there's really no such thing as hitting Shannon Sharp so hard that he don't want to run the ball the next play. Right. Absolutely. And if that's your only goal is to hit him so hard that he don't want to be him no more, you just out of luck. Yeah, you wasting your time. There's no, no your coach can't help you. 
It ain't no pep talk going to help you. <laughs> Don't matter about the uniform, your chili. None of that matters. If it ever gets to mano y mano, may the best man win. And if you've been living your entire life trying to be the best man that you can for mm -hmm. yourself, then you should feel great about those odds. What do you think about Kanye rant? What's going on with Kanye? <laughs> From a distance, obviously, I don't know how well you know Kanye. I don't know if you've been around Kanye, but from a distance, what 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 do you suspect's going on? A lot of shit. I suspect that we're pretty awful people if we say that somebody got a mental illness and then we watch what they do. If you say somebody got special needs, then why would you be watching them and holding them accountable like everybody else? Wouldn't you grade them on a curve? Wouldn't you go, whew, this guy. Because, I mean, what are we reacting to? What are we reacting to? You're the one that put him in a position where he thought he was God and could call himself Jesus. And you're the one told a guy that writes musical lyrics that he was a genius. Mm -hmm. You're the one that's like, so what? What do you expect? The guy married a whore. Like, what? Oh, Lord. Like, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I mean, married her because she was one. <clears throat> Not he didn't know. He understood that he wanted that. He courted that. That's what he wanted to base his family on. But maybe she got, she got a good heart, though. I know what you're going to say. Don't you say it, Kat. Don't you say it. I'm gonna move the if what I'm saying is not correct, then how does she end up with Pete Davidson? <laughs> I mean, it happens all the time. And what if you weren't even good enough for Pete and he leaves you? What do that mean the product was? <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't support or villainize Kanye because I don't understand what it is we want from him. Yeah, he, he's got mental health disorders, man. He, he He's bipolar. He's probably got some anxiety issues and all types of other things, too. And when, when you're that rich and you're that famous for so long with so many yes men around you, he's smart. Don't get it twisted. He's very smart. But fame, fame fucks people up. I don't think people realize how much fame really fucks people up. It could turn you into being mentally handicapped. I, I don't know why we look at a basketball player and say, he didn't score no hockey goals this whole season. <laughs> he don't play hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye <coughs> don't say nothing I can agree with. Yeah. Okay. I, he was the weird guy in the beginning with the pink sweaters right. when we met him. Like. Yeah. What do you think moving to a beat of your own drum? This, this dude started a church and kept cussing. Nobody in black church said nothing. You would have thought all the pastors would have came. You can't be no gospel artist. You just said fuck that bitch. <laughs> Nobody said nothing. Because T.D. Jakes over there with Pete in it. Like, oh, man, come on, cat. Only the guy you had here has been upfront and honest and a man of God and humble and took the L's he had to take and didn't. I I did see it was trending though, but I ain't know. I, I don't. I don't, I ain't know why I can't. I don't. Let me go to this question right here. It's cool. All right. people that love the truth gotta be happy if the truth coming out and lies is getting exposed. That's just what time it is. Twenty twenty four, folks. Are you related to? Uh 2024, folks. Keep that in mind. Remember that shit this year. Uh, Luda. No. Um, so there was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing, and it had to be one or the other of us, and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us. We were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. <laughs> now, one person ended up with a light-skinned, ugly-faced wife that's never done a... Remember I told you that if I say that, it applied to seven people? Yeah. It's part of what they give you.
Okay, I didn't get it. I'm not mad about it. How much money did they give? 200. Sir. 200 million. Fast and Furious is on what number right 10. now? 10 million. 200 million. I might need to get me one of the more women to look, to look, look the same. That's what they all end up saying at the end of the day. Kevin told you he wasn't going to wear no dress until they offered him the dress, and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. But you didn't make it before they brought it up, did you? No. It's okay. It's all right. You it's have a lot of politics. Never talk about it. I'm not that controversial. <laughs> what, 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 where are we go? Where are we headed, Cat? Uh, this is sad. This we've never been here before. We've never been at the point where neither option is good for us in real life. No. This is a different conversation. This is: Would you rather go back with your ex, or would you rather go back with the person before them? <laughs> <laughs> Both bad. Both options. bad options. Like one guy. How did we get one here, guy can barely put his sentences together and the other guy will put sentences together from whatever he's read <laughs> or whoever told him like but how do we get, how do we get here how do we get here all division divides there's no way around that all, all division, division divides, divides. Um, politics even in the beginning when our constitution was drawn up the the Two parties was not what they had in mind. No. They always thought that it would be two main and another independent mm -hmm. party. They always assumed the independent party would be um, just as strong as the others. Uh, a, a lot of that just didn't happen. And um, that's what I've learned more from comedy is that Republicans laugh at the exact same thing that Democrats laugh at. They laugh at us. As long as I'm talking to Democrats, I can make them laugh for one hour straight about what Republicans do. By the same token, I can go talk to Republicans for one whole hour and have them dying about the stuff that Democrats do. But at the end of the day, who does that? Yeah, your team got an offense and a defense. They're not supposed to be enemies. The enemy is the other side. Wow. You can't do politics like that. Nope. Mm -hmm. It's not good for the country. Man, you see this Mark Zuckerberg building this $270 million bunker? Yeah, what the if fuck? If you have a billion dollars, we have learned that you can do whatever you want to do. When Elon Musk wants to send space things in space, he don't have to ask nobody's permission. Congress don't meet. Senate don't meet. No police department got to be warned. He don't need a permit. None of that. If you got a billion dollars, you do what you want to do, and then you tell them what you did. Fame. And that's how it goes. What he built on the bunker, a two hundred seventy million dollar bunker. What he know that we don't know, cat? Kim Jong Un. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you don't know. Do you understand that people that are not very bright are in charge of nuclear bombs all across the country? Mm -hmm. The world. That's what he knows. He knows that thirty percent of all weapons systems are running off regular Wi-Fi. So what does that mean? That means if a solar flare or a meteor hits either one of those, literally a bomb can go off just because the system accidentally got turned off. Yeah, that's what he knows. Mm. The, the people that are in power know that the people that are running the most complicated and deadliest things on the planet are just an average idiot. And you know lots of idiots. I do. Yep. And these these people are not special. Back in the day they were. Yeah. Not today. No. Not today. You say you smoke a little weed. You don't smoke with Snoop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually a bigger smoker than Snoop. He'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll tell you that. But I don't <laughs> like I don't mix anything with my weed. <laughs> he said <laughs> smoker than Snoop. He'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll tell yeah. I'm actually a bigger smoker than Snoop. He'll, ah! he'll, he'll tell you that. But I don't like I don't mix anything with my weed. <clears throat> I just do weed, right? So no yeah, nobody has that minimum I mean you nobody gotta... nobody has 
Nobody, nobody does 20 blunts a day like me for 30 years. Like, like I was the first person to have a weed roller, like somebody whose job it was. Like I haven't, I haven't rolled a blunt in 20 years. You probably forgot like how. if you go, I'm saying I, I prefer the saliva of ladies. Oh my goodness. No, no, understand what I'm saying. If for a blunt, it's necessary for yeah, it to get lit, yeah. right? And so if you had spent 20 years smoking with dudes, that's a lot of male saliva that you would have just accidentally ingested. I, I can't. But the fire done killed I, I can't be this specimen on that. <laughs> it takes uh, the saliva of nice ladies on that. But yeah, I'm, I'm a, yeah, that's all I do. That's just that. Do you consider yourself a king of comedy? Where did, where did Kevin? No, we? they, they consider that. Oh, that. Like, like when, after Bernie left, them same three guys I'm telling you about, the Kings. Yeah. Right? Cause DL is the greatest. Yeah. There's, there's no DL slander gets tolerated. Um, but they came to me. I was supposed to be the fourth King. I got the offer. Then what happened? But I turned it down. Why? Because you shit on Bernie. And I know the truth. You think I'm gonna let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? Fuck you. <laughs> Why? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. The reason you was supposed to go last is because it was your tour. Tell the truth. It was Steve's tour. Not it was gonna be called the Kings of Comedy, it was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. Of course you gotta close if it's your tour. That's why it was such a big deal. But you couldn't do it, because you can't beat the best. And until you humble yourself, you will forever be kinged by the king. And because you finally did it, because you didn't have no other choice, and now that he gone, you going to act like, he wanted to be a movie star. You stop it. You stop it. That man was funnier than all of y'all, and y'all thought y'all had one over on him. You thought he was black and ugly, and you were good looking, and he couldn't make it, because you did. And that ain't the way comedy works. The king is the funniest, period, every time. And that's why no audience member was ever swayed. It didn't matter where Bernie went. You think if Bernie went first, he wasn't the king? <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. Get your ego out of this. You let the best be the best, right? Cat, Cat Williams, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming on, bro. I really appreciate that. Thanks for sharing the, Thank you. the stories, setting the record straight. Now, you know they're going to double back. Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. Only because if once you play this back, you'll realize I didn't say anything that made me look in a good light. I, I wasn't tearing down others to boost myself up. I, but I do have to acknowledge things that did not take place. Like, we're very ingenuous if we say this is not a game and we don't play it and people ain't in positions and people don't have their favorites and they group and they click. And, right. Well, that happens in all businesses. Right. We, no, no. Say what side you on. Say why you don't like the other side. And then get to the game. But in the game, I'm wiping the field with them to the point where they don't even compete anymore. So how you gonna let a dude that been on the bench for 15 years. Uh, I would have beaten Jordan's ass. Shut up, Jordan is still alive. <laughs> we'll call Jordan right now. You can't beat him now. <laughs> Not then, you can't beat him now. Right. Cat Williams. Shannon Sharp. Appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you. Wow. Wow. That was a great interview. That was a great interview. I see why everybody was telling me I needed to jump on this. I see why uh, it was damn near being talked about everywhere and I was trying to avoid it like the fucking plague. Because I didn't want to get too much of a backdrop or backstory on what was being discussed. Um, now, now I got to go see how people responded to this. Oh, shit. Cat Williams definitely uh, put some people on blast. Rightfully so, too. I, I like how he, uh, you know, and one thing that really bothers me, too, is when people d disrespect the dead because they can't speak anymore. They can't do anything. So why would you insult the dead like that? 
It doesn't make any sense to me. <clears throat> I'm glad I'm glad he stood on that. He stood on business. He stood on business. Hey, hey, thank you so much, Tommy. I appreciate you. Uh, um, I, I'm horrible at taking gifts, guys. You know that. I'm horrible at, at taking gifts, but I appreciate you. You said, what's this seven-minute clip from before Cat Talk? How funny is Cat Williams, Joe Rogan experience, uh, Stavros Halkias, 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 Halkias. Okay, I'll check that out. Let me take a picture. Uh, I'll take a picture of it and I'll, I'll try. I don't think I can do a reaction to uh, Joe Rogan stuff, but I'll try. I'll take a picture for you. Um, but thank you so much, man. No, no donation necessary. I have a hard time accepting gifts, guys, but thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Tommy. Um, Bernie's daughter spoke on this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like it when people disrespect the dead. Um, I have an issue with that because they, they can't speak and their life is over and you're going to try to tarnish the accomplishments that they have had. Uh, now, obviously I'm not best friends with cat or anything. I'm not best friends with fucking these comics, but a lot of what cat says makes sense. You know, uh, and he's been very consistent over the last 10 years. You know, so uh, we'll, we'll see what comes of this. How many views did that fucking video have? Like 48 million, if I'm not mistaken. Let me get away from my net worth, which <laughs> I guess somebody's keeping track of my net worth now. Yeah, good luck counting my. Uh, yeah, it says 49 million views it premiered on January 3rd. So about two weeks ago. Jesus Christ. I hope you guys enjoy watching with me. It was something new. I was like, you know, I want to see this podcast. I don't want to watch it alone. Um, I thought it'd be cool to be able to go live and hang out with you guys. Um, YouTube has my monetization turned off, so I can't make any revenue right now. I don't know what the fuck that's about. Um, so I figured, fuck it, why not just go live and hang out with you and watch it together and, get, you know, hang out. This, this, is, a, this is a hangout for me. You know, this is, this is a place just to relax and kick my feet up and you know, just chop it up with you guys and, you know, having you guys around, it, it means a lot, man. I like hanging out with my family. Um, uh, Joshua, John, I used to do heroin, so it took me years to enjoy weed again. And I have zero desire for heroin anymore. I had so many friends die in the last 15 years. I'm sorry you lost so many friends, Joshua, but I'm, I'm glad you're doing better. Uh, I'm really glad you're doing better, my friend. Uh, it will soon have higher numbers than any Joe Rogan clip still on YouTube. Possibly. Uh, the only issue is is the uh, copyright issues with Joe Rogan stuff, but I'll do my best to check it out. I got I to gotta talk to YouTube and see why I can't even monetize my content. I don't know. I was going to go make about five or six videos, but now I'm hesitant to even... I'm hesitant to even release anything. Um... Because I can't do anything right now. Like I can't, I can't turn my monetization off or on or anything. So I'll upload as soon as I can, guys. I'm still gonna do my five to six videos tomorrow. Um, I'm probably gonna post. Uh, no, today's Tuesday. I'll post on Patreon on Wednesday too. Don't forget that. And uh, we'll do live donation requests tonight too. It's Tuesday night, so 6 p.m. We'll, we'll we'll do the live donation request. Um, either way, if you, if either way, if anything could just watch and comment on, uh, you're talking about from DKK. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely check it out. I'll definitely check it out. No problem. What's up, Wallflower? Very few have taken the time to watch the whole thing. I think, unfortunately, well, I'm sure they only wanted to watch snippets to kind of make content out of it, to try to boost their views and stuff like that, man. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't hate any, anybody trying to grow their platform. Well, you guys know me, man. I, I try to keep it as as real as I possibly can. All I know is how to be me. I don't know how to be anybody else. And uh, if I'm going to watch something, I'm going to do it the right way, you know, uh, and, and pay it its respect. So make sure you show love to the Shea Club and uh, go like, go subscribe, show love. And uh, yeah, that's the most important part is we show love to that platform. And congratulations on an amazing interview. Uh, that's what we need. We, we need more truth. I feel that's. You know, when Shannon was asking Kat, like, how we got here, lies, lies upon lies upon lies. And we need more truth tellers. We need more whistleblowers. 
there's so much fake shit going around today. And it's not social media. It's people and corporate greed. That's all it is. It's liars and corporate greed. It's wiped out the entire middle class of America. It's just destroying countries around the world. Currency is worth next to nothing at this point. Everything's doubled or tripled or fucking quadrupled in price. Um, people are hurting, and I recognize that shit. And like I said, I, I used to make decent money from YouTube, and now I don't make anything. I'm, I'm literally making $500 a month, which is fine. You know, I, I write songs for a living. I'm good, but that's why you're. if you notice, like you're watching YouTubers retire. They're quitting. People are leaving the platform. The platform's going to kill itself. I'm being dead serious. It's going to kill itself. I'm give basically what I'm doing is I'm giving I'm giving YouTube three more months of my time. I'm going to try to make a run and see what I can do and try to fix these issues with people helping me. If it cannot be resolved, then you'll probably see me take a walk. Uh, I'll probably still game and stuff on Twitch. Uh, I'll probably post a Rumble and Patreon, but I'll probably take a walk from YouTube if. Uh, Things continue the way they do because, you know, working 9 to 15 hours a day on a channel that's just going to die is kind of pointless, you know. But I'm going to give it another shot. I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to give it my all and uh, I'm going to work as hard as I possibly can. You guys know me. I might even do another week where I do 50 to 100 reactions in one week. So uh, I'm going to try to bust my ass for this platform. But, yeah, they're going to kill this platform off, man, which sucks. And he said, Cliff B, sorry, YouTube's still messing with you. I uh, was hoping it was all fixed. Can't wait for the live reactions tonight. I can't wait to do them either, eh? I can't wait to do them either. I love them. I love them. Hey, Sunshine, when slash if you watch Robin Williams, his best is live at the Met. For sure, Waffle Hour, for sure. Um, yeah, YouTube sucks, Cliff. Yeah, I know. I, I already made a new channel, Matt. Nobody followed. <laughs> I mean, I made a new channel. I'm not doing everything again either just to have it taken away. Everything's connected to my social security number. So everything's connected to my name. So it doesn't matter wherever I go. It follows. It's, 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 it's not like you could escape it. You know, it's, it's the platform. You know, it's not like, again, this is why you're seeing big named content creators walking away or switching platforms or quitting content creating in general. I've, guys, I've already started a new channel. I've, I've been advertising it for the last month. Uh, I've only got 500 subscribers or like 550 subscribers. So granted, it's a gaming channel, but um, I, the reactions, it's just getting nearly impossible. I mean, uh, I'll do a video that does 300,000 views and I'll make 12 bucks. So I'll spend a bunch of time on a video. It'll do well. Um, and I'm not getting paid for it. So there's no point. You know, I mean, I want to help expose, uh, not expose, but I want to help promote artists and stuff like that. But nobody in their right mind could spend nine to 15 hours a day working on something and not being paid for it. You're gonna, I, I have to focus on my writing. I have to grow as a person. You know, um, I have to grow financially as well, too. You know, I want to be able to be well off and set. So I can retire, you know, eventually. Um, I can't do everything for free forever. You know, people get upset with me when I charge for anything or I do anything. It's like, well, dude, like I can't do everything for free. I damn near already do. I talk to everybody for free. I make content for free. I fucking do lives for free. I do everything. For, I tell people not to donate. Um, and then when I do like live donation requests, cause people ask me to do it, people will harp on me. Like you charge $20 for a request. It's like, well, dude, I had no choice or else I'm going to get bombarded. And on top of that, people are charging like a hundred bucks a reaction. I'm 20 bucks is nothing. You know, like I'm fuck, I'm not making shit. Especially when it was super chat money. Cause I would, YouTube would collect $200 from me and then pay me 85 to 90 bucks. They were taking like 65%. So I have a lot of quarrels with YouTube and there's nothing you can really do with them. But again, like I said, I'm working on something right now. Uh, I'm going to give it until, what is this, February, March, April, 
probably until after my birthday and we're going to see how it's going to go. I'm also getting ready to open a pub. I'm looking at locations right now. Things are looking pretty good. I got everything lined up. I um, just need to find the correct location and get the uh, liquor license going and we're, we're going to be good. We're going to be set. So uh, we, we have, pl I have plenty of stuff going on. And that, that's the thing about life too is you got to pivot. You got to adjust. When something isn't working, well, that door is closed for a fucking reason. Quit knocking. Go to a different door. That door might open up even easier for you. It might just open up for you. You know, you got to learn to take hints in life. When you just don't get what you want, you're just not supposed to have it. And that's okay. You know, go, go look for something else and, and keep trying different things. You thought YouTubers make 1000 per day? <laughs> no, not at all. No. OnlyFans. Yes, Joshua, I will be on OnlyFans. Uh, sorry to hear it's been such a struggle, but I'm glad you have a plan. Well, you got to have a plan in life. You know, that's, we were talking earlier about, you know, things, people, people being broken from uh, facing adversity. And that's why I was saying, no, like not me, like I won't let it happen. You might see me in a time where I'm kind of like questioning things or I'm trying to figure things out or I'm venting frustrations, but that's just my way of kind of like internalizing it and also a form of self-expression to figure out what's next for me. Sometimes I have to speak to recognize exactly what's happening. And then once I'm done, I can reflect on what I was saying or thinking. And I'm like, okay, like now I know what the next move is. So Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this YouTube thing another run probably until the summer. And if things don't improve, then, uh, you know, I'll keep you guys updated. I'm not saying I'm leaving right now. Just everyone relax. Take it easy. But I'm saying if YouTube can't fix these issues, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. You know, if I'm opening other businesses, that's where my time's going to be invested in. And I love content creating. Uh, maybe I come back in the future and I start doing podcasts or something. Who fucking knows? That's why I was saying doing this. Even in doing this, in anything that you do, you're learning. So, so say, say you fucking decide to work in the union. You start doing electrical work, all right? And then one day things just don't work out and you get laid off. Well, you just learn to trade. You can go do so many things with what you've learned. Same thing with me speaking behind a camera, being on social media. I've learned so much stuff just by doing these lives and making these videos and Connecting with all these people that in the future, I might be able to turn this around into something bigger than I ever could have imagined. We don't know the road that's ahead of us. All we could do is just keep driving. And that's it. As simple as that. Matt Lane said I'd be one of Cliff's biggest money makers at the pub. <laughs> that's funny. <clears throat> but yeah, man. Uh, you want a place already built with clientele, right, For your from your club? Well, it won't be a club. No, it'll be just a pub. A pub. Like a small corner pub. Nothing, uh, nothing, nothing crazy. That's that's the money makers. It's, it's pubs. They're little gold mines. And uh, you want a place already built with clientele, right? Uh, so, yeah, you want to be able to, in the city of Chicago, they don't have gambling. Um, well, besides one casino. Uh, so you have to kind of be on the outskirts of Chicago. Uh, we have locations that we're already looking at. I have a meeting next week. I just got done having COVID. I was positive, whatever. Um, I'm going to go look at some locations uh, next week, and we're going to get this sorted out. And, yes, I want to be able to purchase a place that already has gaming grandfathered in because once you apply for a liquor license, it's nothing to really get a gaming license and we could just get the ball rolling right there because liquor sales aren't doing too well across the board. That's why you're seeing a lot of pubs closing down, too, is because liquor sales aren't doing well. Um, people are choosing just to drink at home or just chill at home instead of going out to a pub these days because everything's so damn expensive. That's the way the world is right now, and we have to adjust and we have to kind of relax. Yeah, it's going to be an Irish pub. Yeah. Yes. Irish pub. 100%. First one, weed is better. I agree. <clears throat> uh, just as long, just 
as long now they lock down right after open up wait what after open no a few chefs that just opened when they did that and i, I can't read that sentence donald uh uh some chefs end up going bankrupt i'm not opening a, i'm not opening a club i'm not where where did i say club nobody said club i said a pub a pub no club a pub a club is where it's like doot, 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 doot. a pub is where people go it's like a dive bar you have a few cocktails you get the fuck out or you sit there in so close and you drink out the bar and you play slot machines that's what it's going to be i'm also going to be opening like gaming cafes and stuff too jackie clark said i work in the whiskey industry last year was the quietest it's been in 30 years exactly as i just said liquor sales are down immensely it is insane. I am well aware of what's going on. So, yeah. It's uh, it's going to be interesting. We'll figure it out, though. It's okay. It looks like uh, whenever people try to type in pub, club pops up. <laughs> That's hilarious. A dub is where they replace the audio with a different track. Yeah, it's dubbed over. Correct. Correct. But yeah, guys, that was a great uh, episode, man. Thank you for everyone chilling with me and watching this. Uh, it was crazy. I, I did not know it went down like this. Cat was fucking just, everyone was just catching strays left and right. But I mean, that's what Cat Williams is. is he's a truth teller, you know. Uh, we'll see what happens. I would love to open a dispensary. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing with dispensaries, though, is they cost millions of dollars to open. And the, the return, the ROI is not as fat you, you you're gonna you're gonna miss out on a lot of money for a long time millions of dollars for over 10 years you don't make your money back that quickly with uh dispensaries and on top of that if you're in illinois uh it costs quite a bit just to apply and even if you apply it doesn't mean you're gonna get it so you can go out and spend two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars just to apply to uh get a dispensary and they, the state can just keep your money and not ever give you a pub or a uh, dispensary. So, yep, not there. Apparently, I'm an alcoholic because my phone knows when I'm talking pubs. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, it's crazy, man. Probably would be easier when they figure out how to make it federally legal. Well, as soon as they could tax it. As soon as they could tax it. But yeah, man, um, like I said, I, I was going to make some content, but it's 419 in the morning. I don't know why YouTube is is being YouTube. I, I can't get access to my own videos right now. Um, so we're just going to, I'll upload as soon as I can. Bear with me. Let me figure out what's going on. Uh, let me figure out what's going on with the monetization, which I don't even make money from anyway. But let me figure out why I can't turn it on and I will upload content as soon as I can. Uh, plan on me uploading probably by the middle of the afternoon, and then we'll do the uh, the live donation request tomorrow night as well. Um, so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get out as much content as I possibly can. It's still like fucking negative ten degrees here anyway. What was it? Right now it's negative two. Tomorrow it's gonna be what? See full forecast. Okay, this is getting a little bit too intricate here. I just want to see what it's gonna be tomorrow. Tomorrow it's at least well no today it's gonna be two degrees. Okay, Wednesday it's going to be 17 degrees, Thursday it's going to be 20 degrees. So it's going to start warming up a little bit. But yeah, man, everybody go relax, go rest. Thank you for hanging with me. It means a lot. Wallflower, thank you so much for hanging out on Twitch. Um, everybody, thank you for hanging out with me on Twitch. Twitch is the only platform that actually pays me at this point. YouTube doesn't pay me shit. So everybody who hopped over to Twitch, it means a lot to me. Thank you. Um, everybody on YouTube hanging with me, thank you too. I appreciate you just even spending a moment uh listening to me babble or watch content it means a lot man and uh where are you i'm in chicago uh barbara reap i am in chicago south side chicago born and raised like my hat um but i love you guys please stay safe papa thank you so much for linking my gaming channel if anybody ever wants to go subscribe i'd love to have you that's my other channel where i post uh content it's not all it's, i mean it's gaming but it's fun stuff too it's funny clips shorts gaming all types of just little funny things that just happen uh and cool shit too like you know going on killing sprees and stuff like that um, it's just a fun little thing that we do over there um i love you guys
Go take care of yourselves. I will see you as soon as possible. And you should have another five or ten videos up before the end of day. And then I will be going live tonight at 6 p.m. too. So I hope to see you guys there. Uh, don't forget, at 6 p.m. on the dot, I'm telling you, the donation requests fill up quickly. There's only 10 spots, one per person, regular song length, 20 bucks a person. Uh, it goes like this. So try to get there at 6 p.m. Chicago Central Time. I'm out of here. I love you guys. Stay safe. Hot Wired Barb, where are you? I am in Chicago. Did you just ask me that on YouTube as well? Am I tripping? Am I tripping? Did I just answer that question? Yeah, you just asked me that twice. I'm in Chicago. I love you guys. Be safe. I will see you very soon, all right? What's up, Merkwood? Thank you for showing love. I love you guys. I'm out.